basically love you so much when we play co-op we'd sometimes touch and I am so fucking repressed that I married Black Bess my life is such a mess we were just work colleagues big up your choppers Tonight, tonight on the show, we've... John, I like the look of muscle men. So tonight on the show, what... So I spent thousands on sweaty JPEGs. Tonight on the show, I've got but some... when I hit the golden Hogan, Zelda jammies open, but I'm always hoping to pull a friend like John but he's gone because DSP you've ruined all of your relationships in your life oh so what tonight we've got on the show is room 101 with your friend and my friend well with this guy anyway he's going to tell us the things he doesn't like the most that need to go into room 101 You love him. You love to hate him. You hate to love him, but you love him, but you hate him, but you hate to love him. You love him, you hate him. You don't love him. You'd think he's quite disgusting and you really would rather just fuck off. AD, 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 AD. Yes, that man. This man has, in my opinion, done so little of value this week that we really have to scrape the value to find anything interesting to look at on his channel. The true crime stuff is dire. It's just regurgitation of old nonsense. He's even now trying to scrape his own barrels of like awful Madeleine McCann. Like he's interested in what Christian Bruckheimer did because he did horrible things to children. And that's like, you know, Alan's week has been awful. So I don't really want to talk about that time he just watched someone else's interview for an hour and a half and did nothing. Or the fact that he thinks that um, the deception detective who, in my opinion, is only looking at one small part of the puzzle when they just read the words and don't look at everything else. Um, but they've done an episode on Kessinger. Oh, we love a bit of Kessinger. And that's really irked Alan because they've got a load of views on it. And uh, I don't watch that stuff. I'm not into it. Alan is eggy. Well, he's not even that eggy. He just goes on YouTube to say, oh, I always knew Nicole Kessinger. Sorry, not YouTube. <laughs> not YouTube. So it's just so little of value. There's hardly anything. But I have managed to scrape out for you at the end of the Marmite with the with the knife at the end of the Marmite getting up in there, not intending to cause the man alarm and distress. I know he doesn't like Marmite, but like getting up in there with the Marmite. Big ups Red Fan for the gifted memberships. Thank you very much. Let's hit you up a button. Let's hit you up a button. One my tippies. say one my So I think Alan needs to pull his socks up and do a bit more things that are fun cuz rubbish but we've got 10 minutes of it and it will be funny he's going to be discussing the angry alan coat of arms and the origins of his family name and getting a little bit confused about things along the way to top us off to give us a bit of pudding i've got this guy now it's getting closer to easter i'm wearing my jesus toppist look i'm dressed in my appropriate clothes for this i'm not i'm not angry about jesus jesus isn't a nutter he's all right well he was anyway probably still is I don't know how you do you refer to him in the present or past anyway look I'm not like trying to offend people who like Jesus but this guy I think I like for not to watch we had a little chat on the other channel a minute ago we think this guy I like a little bit for not to watch because he stands out in the rain or shine or whatever with a cross his name's Andy Wicks with a crucifix about the Lord Jesus via a man called Zacchaeus Zacchaeus, and he's from the West Midlands, and so am I. So when I hear his voice talking about Jesus, I can do his voice, and it's going to be fun. We'll have a bit of that at the end. And for real pudding, we've got King Cobra, a couple of videos. I've got a food review, a food hack, and suck it trolls. That's going to really tidy us off at the end. So a bit of a strange nut to watch for you tonight, because, because Angry Alan is not the big main one the whole time, okay? And Angry Alan's going to have to get used to that because he's pretty fucking boring. <laughs> Not even his own damn spanners want to turn up to his shows. So lest we, lest we uh, 
languish in the doldrums with him, we're going to, in fact, move on to some other interesting things tonight. Ooh, some food reviews, some food hacks from a man who... can be given no description. <laughs> so yeah, look out for that later on. We'll have Angry Alan being angry, being weird. We've got a little bit of street preaching, which I do enjoy. If I was walking in the street, I would stop and listen. Um, we're going to start with this. And you know you're going to love it. You know you're going to love it. Look at all the greens in chat. Look at all the green names in chat. Look at all of you in chat, all your green names. Oh, I've only got a few greys now. Wow. <laughs> it's a slammer. A mama jammer. It's a slammer mama Is there a song that does that? Just check. Oh, wait. We did this just a minute ago. We did this just a minute ago. So I'm going to not pretend that this is an original thought, right? But we did this just a minute ago and it didn't work then. So let's try this. Alexa, play. Just shake your ass, bitch, and let me see what you got. Bring it all back and similar songs on Amazon Music. Just shake your ass, bitch, and let me see what you got. Just shake your ass, bitch, and let me see what you got. Just shake your ass, bitch, and let me see what you got. Shake you your know ass. What? Alexa, be on YouTube. stop. We we'll have to have words later. You know what I asked for. You heard me. You heard me. Fucking messing me about. It's twice it's done that. You know what shouldn't be on YouTube. I'll tell you what shouldn't be on YouTube is this. And it's just chatting in that way, you funky. Not been live for a bit. Not been live for a bit, have I? Been busy. Busy writing things. Dover and Dolly's asked us a very interesting question earlier when we had a quick skim through to see what we were going to be doing on this over on Twitch. And what we decided was we're going to do this. Uh, we asked the question, Dover and Dolly's mom asked it, why, why no uh, grass from this lawn being used for your grass soup? Why was this not the grass that was used for grass soup? That looks much nicer grass than the grass you used for grass soup. I don't know where to put this. I never know whether to go like higher or low with this. Higher or lower? Higher. If you're higher than a six, you say uh, it's gambling. Don't don't encourage the gambling. Lower. Happy Thursday, Miss Miss Silla, with the Irish clover leaf. Happy Thursday, Miss Silla. Seven people in the building. Room one one is going to be fun. Going to kick off at six o'clock. So thankfully, we can skip it until then. Like, um, I feel like you've got kids and you... What? Hang on. I'm going to skip back a bit. <laughs> uh, where kind of things that annoy you, icks and all that kind of thing, people would go on the show and they'd tell the host what it is. Interesting concept, Room 101. That could work as a TV show. Oh, wait, hang on. Um, so if you've got anything you want to put in Room 101, get your ideas together. Get your thoughts together. We'll have a bit of a we'll have a bit of a community vibe on the go as well. We can put our own things in room one on one today. Anything you want to go in room one on one can go. Anything you want to go, anything except for like obviously don't be racist or nothing. That they want to throw into room one on one, and then what pyramid video? Whoever's trying to put the thing into room one on one. What pyramid video? Has to convince the host that it can go in. So you are my host. You're my host. You're not going to fucking do a Rothschild on me, are you? You're not going to, like, do what they've done to Kate Middleton this week and cut open her head and insert the dead Rothschild's brain so that he can live on in her body as host, having... Because she's already served her purpose, having squeezed out the royal babies. So now he can live on in her body as host. Like, you're not going to do that to me, are you? Basically. Basically. Um, what do you mean is pyramid video? What do you mean pyramid video? Pyramid video? Is that a spelling mis misprint? He puts you in room 101. Squirrel Snipe, you're one of my favourites. Spliff Patrol. Um, it, what pyramid video? <laughs> I 
I was going to cover the fact that he did the gambling video about this guy who's had a bad tri- time wasting his money on the gambling. And then he did a scratch card video where he scratched off a load of scratch cards. I was going to cover that. We did cover the, the strange videos talking about what he got up to in the care home. That was strange, wasn't it? Working in children's homes, holding someone down. Hold- a female who he thought it would be appropriate for him and another colleague to go in their room while she was screaming and yelling and hold her down all night. Hold her down. All the kids could hear her screaming and yelling. Hold her down. All... Anyway, look, let's get off that. <laughs> pyramid vid. What pyramid vid? What are you all talking about? I haven't seen it. Why can't I see it? Pyramid vid. You're all gaslighting me now. I'm being gaslit in chat <laughs> by my regulars. <laughs> pyramid vid. Pyramid vid, it rhymes. Just shake your ass, bitch, and let me see your pyramid vid. No, look, it doesn't exist. So back to room 101, you fuckers. By my host. I'm your, he's my... And I've got five things, but we're going to do... I'm going to do one. You're going to... I'm going to argue my point. Okay. And then I'm going to pick someone. Um, members first. Right. If, uh, if you want to be involved, if you've got something you'd throw into room 101 keep it keep it clean keep them keen and then have a debate with me whether it should go in room 101 and uh, back if and I forth. feel that it's worthy a bit of a we'll back and forth it into the tank where only you have a voice <laughs> so that's how it's going to roll that's how we're going to roll so who have we got here then who have we got we've got nine people in but only two people have spoken did David Dyke penetrate you with his penis Got Miss Scylla, I've got the Funky. Funky's always chilling. Now hold on, Lorraine. Pressing the like button. Hello, how are you? I am under the water. Please help me. Long time. As it goes more into the summer, we'll have a more back garden views, but then late, in about half an hour, I'll have to get the mason blinds open. You know what I mean? So, yeah, we're going to get rolling in about five minutes, so get your... What? ...selections if you want to throw something into Room 101. And, yeah, I hope you've uh, I hope you've got some good ones. I hope we can get into, like, some nice debates about them. Some mass. Five, and... Well, I had about ten, but some of them, they're not even debatable. I mean, there'd be no debate. It's just, like, everyone would agree. Yes, Jenny! OG! In the house! So there has to be some debate about whether these make good things to go in, yeah? uh, So my suggestions would have been like pedos, like stuff like that, but there's no debate. They definitely go in. So So have a drink for Jenny. Pick up your brews and your vodka. Nice. nice, Water. Nice big... That is water. You can't afford bottles of vodka. (laughs) Someone's doing some mad... Some mad garden at this hour. Right? In the daytime, you mean? It's annoying me, though. Whatever, crack on. Just come in. <laughs> that was annoying oh. you, whatever it is. Here. Paul from Paul hey, from hey. <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Yeah. I've never seen Paul from Newcastle in the house before, so big up Paul big up. from Newcastle. Big up, not big ups. Big up yourself. We used to say that on the garage rave music scene. Brian Harvey knows what I'm talking about. Big up yourself. And they say it in the detractor sphere, and now we say it. And now he says it. It's Newcastle, chicken and paper. I got told, if you ever want to try and do a Geordie accent, say these three words. Newcastle. Newcastle. Chitten. Chitten. And paper. Paper. Newspaper. There you go. Keep there's, me your Geordie, there's your Geordie uh, education. Paul, what do you think? Do you think I'd pass walking through the streets of Newcastle? No, you've still got your shirt on. What do you think I'd get booted out? Booted out. As an imposter. Mank. Mankville. Right, Jenny, room 101 is where... So it was Do you not awesome know what it is? Led into like the early 2000s. What it is, Room 101, is where you go to face your harshest fears after you've sullied yourself with the party. And they drag you in there. It's at the top, talking of pyramids, it's at the top of a big pyramid in the building, uh, the head of Insoc. And they drag you up there. And then for Winston, it was that he had this box put on his head with a load of rats. And he didn't like the rats, and they're all in his head in the box. And it sent him fucking do lallis. In the end, he just sat there and played chess and drank victory gin and watched the news. So, yeah, a book and a movie, and then it was a TV show. That's where I'm... Uh, oh, you mean it's a it's a TV show so, about putting things example, you don't like in? Say, like, you've got... Say, oh, please don't. Like, 
Um, I'm going to speed up the explanation. You've got kids and you've got glitter. You've been out some crafts and you've got glitter. Or Lego. Lego. And you stand on the Lego. Or glitter. Glitter. It's everywhere. Or... Lego. What else could there be? Le um, Le Lego. I had like a few kind of like standard ones, but no one would argue. You know, like just like basic. He's like, not explaining this very well, is he? Jenny, what it is, is your things you don't like the most, you can expel them from the world. They can be gone at the push of a button, the pull of a switch. These things will go forever into the void of room 101, where we keep things that we just don't want to have to deal with anymore. The stuff we don't like in the world. And it could be anything from a bit of glitter to, I don't know, nonces. <laughs> Big ups, Robin Green. Like, subscribe, enjoy. Like, subscribe, enjoy. That should be like a little seek. I should get that. I should get some sexy Kessinger to say that, and then I should have it as a button. But instead, what I've got is a battery exhausted. I have no fucking clue what you're talking about or who you're talking to. That's the problem. So, but you can have this one as well. Jesus is on my side tonight. Bear in mind, and Jesus doesn't like. Fucking all sorts of stuff that goes on on the internet, I tell you. Gets well fed up with it. Shouts out to Wedgie Watch, Blank Faces. Shouts out to Blank Faces, Wedgie Watch. They got a shout out from John Wedgie this week. I'm going to have to cover that like in more detail at some point. Because I love it when a detractor gets a shout out from the person they're detracting. But no one's going to argue that. Uh, you Get over to their channel to have a look at that video. Or they're doing a new channel, so they might find out more on their channel about the new channel. Could have like... Oh, I'll tell you what does annoy me. Tell you uh, what does annoy me. Betting adverts. They do annoy me. That's because you see a lot of them because you're watching a lot of commercial television. Betting adverts, they do my head in. Um, I'll give you examples here without giving mine away. I'll tell you what, one of the most controversial, one of the most controversial Room 101 entran entries ever was Anne Robinson. Do you remember from The Weakest Link? And right. She, she went in there, did she? Because she was a bit annoying, wasn't she? She tried to put in the world. Oh, no, it's what she tried to put in. <laughs> she tried to put in the Welsh. One of the biggest ever complaints from Ofcom, that. So, so don't do racism if you can avoid it on Room 101. Prize, you can't put a whole nation in. <laughs> but Ab Robinson, Ab Robinson did. Yeah, I've got a couple of minutes, so I'll... I'll um, go You've on got it. a couple of minutes? You've got all fucking day, mate. This is your show. Do what you like. Uh, room 1, 101. Nice. Um, you promised that you're going to start it in like six more minutes, but you could just do what you want. <laughs> selections. Um... Right. I'm not seeing any Room 101 selections in chat. You'll have to at me with your Room 101 selections if you want. I can At any point, I can pause this nonsense and just talk to you. Yeah, someone needs this. They're basic, though. Wasps. Wasps. I mean, we need them because bees make honey and wasps make treacle. So as, as much as they're annoying, like, where are we going to get treacle from? People. Follow ladies. People that don't pick up dog shit. People that don't pick up dog shit. Yeah, it fucking ruins your grass soup. Things like that, do you know what I mean? It's things that annoy you. Uh, on you. you what? Uh, uh, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you a funny story about this. I've got two. One funny story. I've got three funny stories, dog shit stories. You'll love dog shit stories. They'll really tickle you. So <laughs> one funny dog shit story is I used to have a hairdressing salon. I used to go out putting out flyers on my Sundays, like putting flyers through the doors, five pound off your haircut. I used to think it was a good idea. I put them in a little envelope. So it's like hand delivered in a little envelope and you open it up and it's like, here's five pounds off your next haircut in my little salon. Would you like to cut for your haircut? And I go and deliver them to all the nice houses or the like normal houses. Probably not the horrible houses. Probably probably not the horrible houses. <laughs> Not, not, not to everyone that I don't want to come. Like, I probably stay out of those like you know no go areas. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm doing that to him. It's Alan that does that shit. Um, but yeah, the uh, you know what I mean. Anyway, look, go out and hand out all the flies in the houses. And I used to take my dog on a lead with me because it's like a walkie, isn't it? We go around all the houses. The dog gets a walkie, and I'm doing this, and it's a summer's day, and the dog does a poop, which is fine. I can handle that. Pick the dog poop up because I'm not a dickhead that doesn't pick up their dog poop. I picked up the dog poop, right? Tied it up in a little bag. And now I've got a dog in one hand, a bag, and I need to put flyers through the letterbox. So I've run out of hands. There's no bin nearby. So what I did was I just took the bag and I just tied the dog poo on, on the little bag, to the side of the big bag that I'm carrying. And I carried on handing out the dog. And I'm starting to think to myself, God, this dog poop is starting to smell. Now, I know it's only in a little bag tied on, but God, it's quite a stinky poop, that one. I wonder what the dog's done to create such a stinky poop. And I look round, the bag's split. It's all gone down the back of my trousers. I'm walking round all the neighbours' houses, handing out cards to come to my hairdressing salon with shit all down me. <laughs> so no one's going to want to come to my hair salon because I've got shit all down me. 
So what I had to do immediately, of course, was remove my trousers because I'm not walking around with shit all down me. So I got them off, shook off the dog shit, rolled them up. I've got them. That's good. It's not ideal, is it? <laughs> Now I've got no trousers on. So the um the handing out of the flyers had to stop. That was the end of that, obviously. That no more no more work for Scotty on a Sunday. You shouldn't work on a Sunday. Jesus was obviously cross, wasn't he? So he punishing me. And then what I had to do is I had to walk back to my car, which was the other side of the estate. <laughs> I'd only got halfway around my route, you know what I mean? And I had to walk back to my car on the other side of the estate, having just handed out flyers to everyone's letterbox. So of course everyone's letterbox just got a flip flip. Clip, clip. You know, most people are coming to their door and picking up this flyer and seeing what it is and looking out their window and seeing me with no trousers walking back to the car. So they could have smelt me. They could have seen me. I don't know. Overall, it was not a successful run. But yeah, I remember that one. Um, my other dog poop story that really I didn't like was uh, I, I do pick up my dog poops. I am a dog poop picker upper. So imagine my disgust when kicking through the autumn autumnal leaves once, I kicked a dog shit into the air and it smeared all over my shit. That was a bad one. I was like, why don't you put leaves on it? That's made it even worse. Kick that up. Oh. Yeah, and I thought I had one more, but I can't remember off the top of my head now. Which I think we're going too far crude. I think I think we just need to leave the crude ones away. Leave the crude. I think I've got one more in me. I think I've got a few more. I mean I've done, had dogs for years. <laughs> you wanna get those things? Yeah, I had, I had boxers on. Yeah, I wear boxer shorts. I had boxer shorts on. I just had to accept it was summer. I just had to think, right, you know, I'm just going to have to do this. But I did think to myself, what's the best plan for my business here? Because <laughs> like, the whole point of the promoting of the business is to try and get people into the salon. But everything I do from here on out without the trousers stinking of dog shit is going to be a negative. Stick them in room 101. Um, yeah, people that don't clean up dog shit. That's a good one. Excuse my French. Um, let's have a look at some more. Oh no, yeah, the other one I did, and this is a bit me. Like, I could have got myself in trouble here, but there's this guy, and he was leaving his dog shit up our street, like up round our way, where I walk my dog. And so I wasn't like waiting for him or anything, but I saw him do the dog shit, and I saw him walk off with the dog. So I hurried on. I picked it up in a bag. Like I'm not an arsehole completely. I picked it up in a bag, but I chased him up the street with it. And I went, mate, mate, you forgot something. Your dog dropped this. You forgot this. I think I think you left this. And like, you know, walking up and he fucked off. Like he just like scarpered. But everyone could see me waving the shit around and yelling about it. And I think that put him off leaving his dog shits up our street. Certainly if you could see me. The other one I like doing, and I don't advise you do this these days, is if someone throws something out, because it got me in nearly two fights, but if someone throws something out the car window, like a crisp bag, I pick it up and I pop it back through the window and I say, oh, you dropped this. And like, you know, like I'm doing them a favour. Oh, sorry, you dropped your wallet. You know, oh, you dropped your crisp bag. Just fuck it back in their window. They don't like that, though. Bad parking. Bad parking. What else have we got? These are just examples here. I'm going to start in a minute. Just examples. So, you know. You all right? Yeah, things that get you triggered, things that annoy you, things that wind you up, things that... You annoy me. Alan annoys me. Your head. Things that do you nothing. Peter Folding going up and saying he was going to be making all this fuss in the media. Peter Folding making all this fuss on Twitter. Twi Twitter. <laughs> making all this fuss on Twitter uh, about how he needed on the, the case and all these people. So, we need to get Peter Folding to help find that poor boy. <clears throat> and then uh, Peter Folding this and Peter Folding that. And then he goes up there, two weeks, nothing. Disgusting! All that kind of stuff. Plenty that I could put in. Plenty. List. Plenty. And then what it is, basically, right? I'm going to give it a couple of minutes because I said I'll start in this at six o'clock, so I'm going to hang fire for a moment. Hang fire, hold back. Don't don't give them the goods just yet. Build it up. Um. You're right. Yeah. So yeah. just things that do you, Eddie, really. Okay. Squirrel Sniper. Some funny names in it. Squirrel Sniper, you chuffer. <laughs> Right, I'm going to read and have a look who's in, in here. Funky. Listen, no one gets, no one, from me, from me, me, no one gets told off or admonition for being in someone else's chat and enjoying it. That's fine. I'm not eggy at you. I don't think, oh, you can't go to someone else's stream or anything like Angry Addis does. I don't care. It's fine. Nobody in the, the comments, in the chats or anything gets a finger pointed at them from me, except Angry Allen's spanners. Angry Annan's people and the people that join in and do trolling and come over to the channel to like say negative things and be weird, they get the finger point, but everyone else can go anywhere and have fun. It's fine. Legend. Paul from Newcastle. 
Squirrel Sniper, what a name that is. Lizzie Bell. You want to get yourself a second account, though. <laughs> D to the 20, Jenny. Big shout out Going to the Doc. I'm with the Doc still. In there. Um, council tax. Right, okay. So I've got five. Council tax was something that they suggested that they didn't want and they thought it was bad and it should go in room 101. You missed that. Right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read one of mine out. I'm going to tell you. Well, I'll read it out and then we'll get in. I'll give you a few of my reasons. Okay, I understand the concept now. And then it's down to you. To it's down to us. What do you mean it's down to us? What's down to us? Kind of debate it. If you debate don't it. Agree with me then give me your input as to why you don't agree. Uh, why? See, the, the problem is, is that the show works on this premise. He's got this the wrong way around. What should have happened is, you in chat should turn up with your Room 101 ideas, and you should have a chance to put your idea forward, and me, the host, should be a very strict, oh, I don't know about that, oh, you'll have to convince me, and you've got to put your ideas forward, and that's, where the, that's how the show works, yeah? But if it's you doing the convincing, and you've got to convince the audience, but you're also the host and you control the fucking lever. I don't know how exactly this is going to work. <laughs> Shouldn't go in room 101 if... Um, you you've got to be this. You've got to... Okay, we've got to be the strict... In, in theory, we've got to be the sort of guardian of room 101 and not allow things in unless I'm really convinced. Okay, got it. C kind of counter-arguments or anything like counter -arguments, that? Counter-arguments, yeah. Uh, let me know. I'm good at counter-arguments. I'll enjoy this. This is what it's all about. Play devil's advocate. So let's go, let's wait one more minute. Except I wouldn't advocate for the devil. I love fucking Jesus. Isha, great miracle working prophet. Ramadan Mubarak, for everyone that's that's doing Ramadan. It's just gone one minute past six. I'll probably have to close the blinds fairly soon. But I'll tell you what, fuck the Buddhists. I don't like the Buddhists much. <laughs> <laughs> now we've got, what have we got at the moment? Richie Sunak's having a right attack at the Muslims, isn't he? Because he's on what is his religion's different from theirs, isn't it? Like there's like I don't I don't know. Don't start me. It's gonna start. It'll go dark like rapid, won't it? And then we'll get right into it. So I hope you've got some out ready. Don't reveal. Big up red fan for the gifted memberships. Hello, Moto. Trying to find the most positive buttons here. Follow ladies. Uh huh. Uh -huh. One ladies. Uh huh. Super ladies. Uh huh. Nah, two set. Mukbang. Cheeseburger challenges. Let me out though. See now more people coming in. Big up, everybody. Big up. Welcome to room 101. Or my conservatory. So, right. A few more people coming in. So, basically, this is the crack. I've got a list of five things that absolutely... This is starting to annoy me a little bit. I feel like I might want to get the Room 101 background out for us. Although it's just ripping it off, isn't it? So maybe you don't want to do that. Like, they'll have the background here like this, won't they? Like, off the telly program somewhere. It's like that, isn't it? So you could get that, open image in a new tab. You could screenshot that. You could put it up. You could sit behind the desk with your green screen. I could, like, I could just do my curtain and do the green... I don't think I can be arsed with it, but... Um, nor could Luke, apparently, and it's his show, so... <laughs> do my head in. Get on my Swede. But, yes, Suzanne Naylor. Thank you, Red oh, Fan, Suzanne. though. Listen, Red Fan's been really generous there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Like, the number of greens versus greys is far tipping the balance of greens to greys. And if you are a green, you can go and watch some of those uh, members-only videos and stream... No, videos mainly, isn't it? Um, you can go and watch them. They exist on the channel. And I will listen to your ideas and look at your names more important than the people that are not... <laughs> Things that absolutely do, do my head in, things that piss me off. Um, I get it. Things I don't like and things that I think should be banished into the room 101. I've got five of them. Five of them. I'm going to do my first one and then it's down to you to kind of... You already explained this. Give me your, your input on that. Tell me why it shouldn't go into room 101. Okay. Um, give me your opinions on it. I need to convince you why it should go in. Okay. And then after I gave, give my argument and we've had a bit of back and forth, I'll then ask you, should it go in room should it? Room 101. And I'll, get a little and, and I'll say no, won't I? Because you, unless you've managed to convince me, but I suppose I'm playing devil's advocate, so I shouldn't be easy to convince. I don't know where the lines are drawn. Up, and then we'll decide if it can go into room 101 or not. I'll do one, and then I'll throw one over to, to one of you guys. You'll throw it over to me? Yeah, I'm not doing a life. I'm going to say nonces. These fun lives. Uh, and I want you to argue about why they shouldn't go in. For a while, Lizzie. I've been really busy, you know, I've been, I've been writing. Like the whole, or just before we start, the whole reason in the first place I started. Miss Silla, keep it, hold it, hold it right there. This is not Room 101 business. Yeah. 
keep it in the forefront. Um, the reason I started this channel is because I've got a comedy, a drama comedy. And um, you thought it'd be a good idea to interview Peter Folding to build a platform to then get it, get it out there, um, get it out there into the masses and film some scenes and get it known. Um, never. Well, I, I would I'd... say that there has been some dramatics, and you're quite funny. <laughs> But not like the way you think you're funny. I don't think you've got the, the skills to write a comedy. But I think watching you is funny. We um, cover the Nicola Bully case as as big as I did and do the work that I did. I never envisioned that at the time. Big up, Mint Wave. How are you doing? <laughs> are you all right? <laughs> uh, but I did, so here we are. Um, but a lot of that has led you to my channel. So, you know, in God's plan and all that kind of stuff. Right. What I'm going to do, when I've done my first one and we've decided if it goes in room one or one or not, I'll then go over to a member. I'm going to, a member can pick first, because they are members, you know what I mean? You uh, said this! Um, and then we'll, you, the member, can give me your pick and we'll have a little uh, debate and I'll decide whether it goes into room one or one. Right. Listen, if you say that one more time, I'm going to start getting eggy. Let's start. This is the, this is the theme tune, if you've not guessed. Uh, get away with about. Wait a minute! They said I was fake laughing last time. Some people made a comment saying, oh, Scott was fake laughing. I wasn't. I was just, oh my God, laughing. And here we go again. What? <laughs> this, is the, this is the theme tune, if you've not guessed. Alexa, play the theme tune to Room 101. Save Room theme from Resident Evil 1 and similar songs on Amazon Music. Alexa, you're playing all the right notes, but not necessarily in the right order. Sorry, I don't know that one. Yeah, well, what do you know? <laughs> well, stop it then. Alexa, stop it then. Stop carrying on. We're only doing a bit. Uh, get away with about... Get away with about that much. <laughs> copyright problems. Did you have copyright problems? Incidentally, what happened to that big live you were going to do with Harsh? Right, now I need this sound. There's no sound effect for, um, hold on a minute. If you get your... No, we don't, don't want the advert, thanks. <laughs> I'm a professional screamer. I'm fire. There's no sound effect for Room 101. Um, I need to make one up. I sit back with this pack of zigzags and this pack. Right, so, um, what the hell's this sound? I don't even know how it's gonna sound. Right, here we go. Right, the first thing that I wanna put into Room 101. I mean, for me, this is not even a debate, but they'll mind. It needs to be a debate. It's the whole premise of the show. Might be, if it's a Luke Skinner. That's it, I'm Luke Skinner tonight. You're not Luke Skinner, weird Frank Skinner. You're the people that go on. You're the guest. You're, what's the name from that show? <laughs> You're Anne Robinson. <laughs> um, the first thing I want to put in, for me, it's not even off the bait. <laughs> but, I, in a way, I hope one of you believes in this, because I want to get into it, right? The first thing I want to put into Room 101 is people who think that the Earth is flat. Martin Leaker has entered the chat. <laughs> Martin Leaker has entered the chat. And he hopes that someone in his audience that he can argue with it about. I have to now, the premise is, I have to argue that I think the Earth is flat and it shouldn't go into Room 101. Or at least why it shouldn't go into Room 101. Um, I think that's what I have to do now. If you go to playlists on Super Chuffer, my main channel, then you see I've got a playlist here called Tartaria Uncovered. And in this playlist, I spent, I don't know, well, there are 23 streams, so, you know, a few hours going over some of the conversations about things like a mud flood reset, Star Forts, Martin Leakers, Flat Earth, British Party, 200 Fabricated Years of History, The Lost Generation, The Confusing World of Martin Leaker. Uh, some of these people and what they were saying about Flat Earth and other stuff. Obviously, I didn't go too heavy on Flat Earth because, like, what? <laughs> we don't need to do that anymore, do we? Um, but there are further, more novel 
conspiracy theories going on at the moment because what happened was with flat earth if you do google trends all right google trends will show you like what's cool what's happening you could like search for flat earth for example explore trending united kingdom no worldwide worldwide what about for 2004 until now yeah oh it had a big look it's gone up it's gone up look trending on you on the internet people searching for flat earth went up why did it go up that's weird 2017 it was going up something's happening in 2015 and 2017 to make it go up there was a bit of a trend on the old internet of people talking there were there were flat earthers talking about it weren't there like there was like a revived flat earth movement it even got on the news do you remember it was on bbc news people again think the earth is flat and i it had a bit of a trend you'll notice it starts going down as well oh no no wait this is a problem for flat earthers it goes down it started to buck up a little bit now hasn't it towards the end but it does go down again so what happened is when it went down they thought well, what the fuck are we going to do we're on the internet people obviously know that we're talking bollocks the trend has happened and now people aren't watching our videos as much so tartaria tartaria as a search term oh look at that that's gone up look that's gone up you see how that's gone up at the end there, almost as if when the Flat Earth people realised that the Flat Earth conversation was dead in the water, they needed a new conspiracy theory to talk about to maintain their popularity on the internet. All of a sudden, it starts at the same time as the Flat Earth one goes down the toilet, yeah? And then it increases with searches until we get to today. So I focused more on Tartaria and stuff like that, the more modern ideas, the more novel ideas of what I consider to be you know, a bit nuts, a bit whatever. Um, big up Squirrel Sniper. I allow people to have their thoughts and opinions, though. It's fine. Uh, if we, For me, if I'm going to argue against Luke here, I should listen to him first, maybe, but I'm going to argue this. Flat Earth does not get to go into Room 101 because, right? Because I didn't go heavy on the debunking Flat Earth, no Squirrel Sniper, because I thought it's already been done. As I say, I thought that trend graph proved that it's already had its moment in the sun again and it's been done. Like, I don't have to do science videos debunking it. I'm not the science man. People do. They have. Like, you know. Um, but the Tartaria stuff I find more interesting because it was more novel and recent. So I think Flat Earth doesn't go into Room 101 because it's a tired, boring subject from 2017. And there's a more interesting novel thing to talk about nowadays. And not many people even think it's real and it just seems way silly uh, also though there's a great big lobbying board from the american evangelical christian groups in american evangelical christian reading of the world god created the world in seven days and everything was evolved no not evolved what am i saying not evolved nothing got evolved did it there was no evolution joseph and all that all the Bible, it was what the Bible said. There was no evolution. There were, di there were no dinosaurs and stuff. Remember that, all those people who don't think that and they think Noah's Ark was real and all that business, which it might have been. Um, so those people in America have got a lot of money. Some say, maybe even more than the Jewish lobbyists, let's not get into religion and politics, but uh, that's where this sort of comes from, is that they want to promote to people, homeschool your kids, believe what the Bible says, and like through a strange reading of the Bible, you can claim that the earth is flat and it's... it's firmament and that there is a dome and it's come from the bible it's come from the evangelical christian like groups who want to keep people well confused because they're easier to uh to i don't know manipulate i suppose that's my opinion on that so i think flat earth doesn't go in because one it's tired old news and two it's being backed by massive jesus evangelical christian american groups and today i'm a big fan so i'm and you told me to argue on their behalf so that's my argument okay now, the first reason why I want to put that in is because, A, the Earth isn't flat. Right, good argument. I think you have to prove it. Um, you like the hoodies? I just got it off Amazon. Just got it off Amazon. I like the hoodies. Yeah. I think Jesus, like, although me personally, you know, my deep down feelings, I'm not sure if he was like, the son of god part of like you know three gods trinity and all that i think maybe one god i still believe in god and all that and i still think jesus was a miracle working prophet designed to bring people to god so i think that was okay like uh, we can talk about all the ins and outs maybe but overall yeah pro, you know i'm not trying to be negative about christianity i think religions are okay they can all get on and you know we can just sort of be 
peaceful and respectful of other people's views and opinions without being like I'm not trying to have a pop at Jesus and Christianity here, yeah? I want to make that. Because with the God, do you remember with Bob? You know, we did Bob for Easter last year and we're going to do another Easter special this year. So, you know, we did Bob last year, right? And then I got a couple of comments. Well, one, it was like, you've insulted my religion. And I was like, no, I fucking haven't. I've insulted Bob's religion. And Bob's like, off his nut. <laughs> like, Bob's not doing the same Jesus you're doing. So, like, you know, anyway. So tonight we're going to have a look at a preacher and I put on my Jesus hooder and... Uh, I'm voting that the Earth is, is okay. The flat Earth concept does not go in room, room 101. Should we just leave it there? Anyone believe the Earth is flat? I just want, I want to see if anyone thinks the Earth is flat. Have you got the... Uh, would you dare to even reveal that? I think they do. Squirrel Sniper, you think the Earth... Nah, you don't. Oh, Squirrel Sniper. Are you in there arguing it? Big ups. Go on then, right. Why do you think the Earth's flat? Why do you think the Earth? Do you, are you saying you think the Earth is flat, Squirrel? It's stationary. It's stationary. The Earth. Is All right. So what's interesting here, though, is like Luke's whole stream is going to be derail me. It's like the challenge is derail me. Here's something I say as a statement that I think is quite normal and we should all agree on. If there's anyone in chat that thinks differently, you're going to be isolated and vulnerable on your own, and we're all going to laugh at you. But go ahead, try and derail me. It's flat and stationary. Have you got? Any, what, have you got any evidence of that at all? What makes you think that? Flat as a pancake. <laughs> okay, all right then. So let's get into it then. I love that. I know a few of you are going to kind of troll a few of these. But that's good. That's fine. That's mint. So, okay then. So, not only is there like, um, like pictures of the Wait, Earth. I have to defend the concept that the Earth is flat. That's not how Room 101 works. Room 101 is, you want to put it into Room 101, and I'm the guardian, the gatekeeper, who says, nope, that's not good enough to be in Room 101. That's not annoying enough. That's not rubbish enough. So it doesn't get in. You just have to live with it. It stays in the world. And this one isn't annoying enough, isn't bad enough, isn't rubbish enough. I'm not arguing the world's flat. I'm arguing that it doesn't go in room 101. Um, from space, from the space station, of it being round. Um, like uh, The views of the space station, the argument against that from the flat earthers is that the camera lens is around. So you're looking at it through a roundy lens. And if you go out with your GoPro, things start to look a bit roundy because the lens. Every other star and planet and moon that's ever been observed Oh, they also wrong. say that it's um, CGI. Um, observed, have you ever seen those planets, have you, Luke? Have you? I'm, I'm doing the argument for you. I'm doing their argument. I can do their argument. Um, have you ever seen those planets, Luke? Have you? No. You've seen CGI pictures of those planets on the telis. You just do what you're told. Have you ever looked through a telescope and seen it yourself? No. So, shut up. So why water always finds its level? Yeah, in that, in that it does. Yeah. yeah. That's, a small, that's a small space, though, isn't it? Yeah. What about a big space? Think how big the Earth's think how big the Earth's planes are. It look, of course it looks level because we're tiny little dots on this no, giant. No, that's not the argument. Ball. The argument is if you put water on a ball, it will fall off it. It would find its level, and its level is to fall off it because of the spherical shape of the ball. Like all this giant pancake, whichever way you want to kind of uh, whichever whichever direction you want to go down. Rustic Rambles is in the building. Rustic Rambles is formerly known as Rustic Rachel, and she's now Rustic Rambles. Hi, right, Rachel. Hope she's better so, yeah, after so, a break uh, yeah. from YouTube or she like hid out for a bit. I thought I spotted the same inconsistencies in her typing style as somebody was trolling, but that's just an inconsistency in typing style, I suppose. Get out of it, you cat. Uh, people that think that the Earth is flat, I find it ludicrous. Um, I think that of all of the planets and the moons and the stars out there, to think that ours is, fl is flat is um, it's pretty bonkers, really. There's no evidence to say that it's flat. Apparently there's an ice wall. There's an ice wall surrounding it. Of course there's evidence to say that it's flat. Look at your garden. It's the evidence to prove that it's round that's more difficult for people to get in their heads. That's why the problem exists of this flat earth stuff. They can go out and stand out there and look around and go, well, it looks pretty fucking flat to me. I don't know what I'm going on about. It's, it's the, the idea that it's fucking giant and round and a big sphere that you have to sort of like come to terms and prove. Like, because otherwise the colloquial evidence, the anecdotal evidence of I can't see it being massive and round, like your Alexa and my Alexa are not mates anymore. Your lights keep going on and off. Can you say, Alexa, turn my light back on? Did you mean TV? Did you mean TV? Shush you. 
Cheeky Chop says, I think the earth is round. But then again, I thought Blackpool was the capital of England. Thank you both for the super chats. Okay, all right. So uh, thank you so much for that uh, super uh, trooper. Okay, all right. There's facts, there's reality, and then there's your bullshit world. I can say whatever the fuck I want. Um, That's why we can't fall off, because people say, okay, if it's flat, why won't you fall off? There's an ice wall. All right, well, show me a picture of the ice wall. Well... <laughs> Like Luke's making this easy for me as if I'm now um, arguing on behalf of the Flat Earthers, remember. I'm doing uh, um, I'm doing what the Flat Earthers do. I'm doing devil's advocate. I don't believe this, yeah? But this is what they would do is they'd say, well, here it is. Look, there's the picture of the ice wall. Show me the ice wall. What do you call that? Giant fucking massive wall of ice in Antarctic. Yeah? There's your ice wall. Shove it up your bum. But they would also have to accept that they found that picture on Google and it's a CGI image of something that's fake because you can't prove anything with images that are on Google because they're all fake, just like the pictures from space. So I don't know how they're so keen to use these images to prove their flat earth theory <laughs> at the same time as they're keen to say anything on Google is disprovable and must go in the bin. But there's your ice wall. There's a picture of it. Now, what do you think? <gasps> Submarine swims parallel to the ocean surface. Zero degrees, never breaks the surface. No degrees, no curvature. Right, squirrel. Um, have you ever seen a picture of the, the ice wall? Because I've seen no picture of the ice wall. Well, they can't show it you because they don't have the facility to show you a picture on your stream. <laughs> Google it. Apparently it's guarded. I'm guard, ready to pop you. Really? Another, uh, other reasons why the earth... I've... You have to reassign. <laughs> yeah, I reassigned mine, right? I used to have mine set to that. But I reassigned A-L-E-X-A to C-O-P, choose you are. Well, they spell that word. Um, I, I assigned that, yeah. And then people got eggy at me because like not just one person multiple people anyone who came to my house to be honest said why have you changed that you've taken away the soul and i'm like i don't want it to have a soul it's just a computer i, I changed it and they they told me to oh, change it back they played football with flat earthers and they wouldn't give me my ball back yeah because they don't believe in they don't believe in round objects do they <laughs> <laughs> they do believe in round objects <laughs> like your head you've seen the ice wall of antarctica well the one that surrounds the earth have you seen that one by the way, subscribe to the channel, like, share, comment, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Unless you disagree with me, in which case you probably won't want to like and subscribe to this one. PayPal, I don't have Patreon, I don't have um, coffee, buy me a coffee links, but feel free to... I fucking do. Super chat if you want, that's the only kind of... So does Limmy. Uh, what's the word? Don't know the word, I don't know the word, what is the word? Financial support. Word. Donation, that's it. But like, half an hour they're, not, they're not donations. Legally, for your tax purposes, they're not donations. That I take is super chats, nothing else. NASA produce CGI images. Where are you getting this information from? Of course they produce CGI images. What do you think? The thing is, I'll jump onto the other side of the argument for a quick minute. Look. Hang on, where's my buttons? Of course they produce Egypt, which one am I? I'm going to be the one that believes in the flat earth. Okay, I don't believe in flat earth. I believe in flat earth. I don't. Okay. So, of course, NASA produce CGI images, but that's because they produce a lot of marketing material. And if they only use the images that they took from the Hubble Space Telescope or with no CGI whatsoever, it, you wouldn't understand it. It would look just like shit data stuff. So they use the images, they, the data and the, the stuff they get to create the artistic in person, like, you know, the, the CGI images, which sell the whole concept of like what they're doing because they need funding from the government and from other places and public support and they want people to see it and be interested in it. So they create the most up-to-date impressions of, of course, sometimes they're Photoshop CGI images of stuff in space. At other times, they're images that a computer creates with data, just like you're watching me now through a digital means. So the computer is reading what the camera sees and the camera sees it as zeros and ones and data. And then it, the computer turns it into pictures and colours and stuff. So this is a CGI image of my face right now. So of course CGI images are being used all over the show. But it doesn't mean that space is fake. Because let's say, for example, at the start of FIFA, 
the football, the World Cup thing, you watch the World Cup, there's like a, a CGI sequence at the start of the World Cup of Ronaldo scoring a goal through the, through the, over the top of the pyramids. And then there's Lionel Messi and he's gone through the Eiffel Tower and, and it's all CGI. It doesn't mean the World Cup doesn't happen. Yeah, it just means they use this to glamorize and pizzazz up some stuff. And they also, when you watch the World Cup, the cameras you're watching it through are digitizing the image. And what you are watching is a computer creation in your own home. Yes. So you have to accept there's going to be some of that. And you have to still accept that it's real. So there's that like funny middle ground. And I think this all goes back to Stanley Kubrick was asked by NASA to create some moon footage because... They were going to the moon and they had no guarantee the camera was going to work on the moon. They had no guarantee they were going to get those images back from the moon. And on the way, they wanted to make lots of interesting images to show people like what it was going to look like, how it was going to be and what was going on. So they used Hollywood producers to make like just like today, you see high end film producers make films about what it's like on the moon, like that film, The Martian and all sorts of stuff. But in this case, back then, NASA they asked people to make it for money so they could have this cool footage because they wanted that because they're making fucking steps towards going on the moon and then somehow along the lines it got confused with they wanted it to try and fake the moon to fake it they were never going to tell you what it was for never going to tell you oh they kept it secret except it's not secret because we all know it happened so yeah that's what i think anyway would you ever let me talk shut the fuck up <laughs> back to this also as well, it is a big one. This is a big one, and then we're going to take a vote. We're going to take a vote. Now, we'll, just right? this one, and so then you know we'll vote. You get, like, you get the moon, and then you'll get like full moon. Or this is what you're going to use for it. This is what you're going to use because they're going to be able to do this one as well. I would do stick in the ground shadows. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I could ask them to prove their stuff, but I'd do stick in the ground shadows. You know, sticks in the ground, different places, shadows, and I would do the Southern Cross scene from the Southern Hemisphere, not visible from the Northern Hemisphere. Northern star, northern north star from the you know I do the the stars in the sky and where you stand on Earth and can what you can see in the stars in the sky. I do that one. They're the ones I'd do. Half moon. It's always like a crescent in it or a quarter moon, right? That is your sun, or the Earth. Sorry, you've got the sun, you've got the moon, and then you've got the Earth. All the all the Earth and the moon the way around, whatever. The reason why the moon has that shape is because the Earth is casting a shadow onto the moon because of the sun, because it's round. So if the You're going to want to be specific about which one they are in order they're in for this particular conversation. But yes, I understand what you're saying. If it's flat, then sometimes you'd see like the moon with a line through the middle of it and a bit on either side. Would you? Or what if the Earth was a disc? So anyway, I want to put the Earth, um, I want to put people that think the Earth is flat into room 101. So if people you now? You're going in Squirrel Sniper. <laughs> I would have put the concept in, but I wouldn't have rubbished the people off with it because everyone thinks different things over the course of their life, you know, don't they? I'm sure at some point some people thought Coldplay was a, a reasonable piece of music to purchase on a CD or that Coldplay were making music. I'm sure at some point people might have considered that Coldplay were acceptable to talk about in public without being sick on the floor. <laughs> but that's all changed, hopefully, or it will one day. People think different things over the course of their life and then they might change their mind sometimes. So it's not people I want to write off. Go into room, if it goes into room 101, oh, I've got some conspiracy, some flat earth conspiracy people here. Don't know how I feel about it. I mean, I'm on for a conspiracy theory, but not this one. Right. Uh, well, if, if it goes into room 101, then Squirrel Sniper and uh, Miss Scylla. Yeah. Ban on the way in as well. Ban them. Literally ban right. them, please. Can people that think the earth is flat go into room 101? Vote now. Vote now. You're having a vote. We're having a vote. Do you want to vote here? Do you want to vote? Can I gift you any more memberships? Oh, I've done them all this month. Damn it. Um, do you want to vote? Start a poll. Flat Earth. Room 101. I don't know why we're doing the poll. Oh, well, I've only got top chat on. Live chat. Always live chat. Come on. Um, Flat Earth Room 101. Does it go in? I've argued that it doesn't because why the fuck? It doesn't matter. But While you vote, I'm going to close the mason blind. I've just heard the blinds. I mean... He's playing on the masons thing. Just the blinds. So, obviously, Luke doesn't watch any of the troll content and it doesn't get to him, does it? We're just stupid trolls and it doesn't get to him. But now he's picking on this thing, the mason blinds, and it wasn't me that invented that. 
It wasn't like troll people that troll him that invented it. I don't, I'm not a troll, I'm a detractor. I'm a YouTube commentator. Fair comment on YouTube, not, not intended to cause you alarm and distress. I'm an entertainer. Uh, this is not bullying someone. This is someone who was a bully, getting it back now a bit, yeah? Uh, what's incredible to me, though, is that it was people in his chat. It's people like some of the people who he mentioned, maybe, that believe the earth is that will believe other stuff like i'm not big on the masons me but apparently now these are the mason blinds and he's making a big deal out of it god like stuff lives in his head rent free doesn't it what's the terry pratch world the disc world i love the disc world this world was one of my things that i read growing up and if you love the disc world as well right yeah on the back of a giant turtle the circular world on the back of a giant turtle the giant turtles called greater two in and there are four elephants that hold up the disc world if you love that then you also must hate harry potter because he stole wizard school ideas from terry pratchett <laughs> there we go close right what i've got two volts for why do you why do you need to close the blinds what what difference is it that it gets dark Is it because it becomes reflective? Hang on. No, the reflective, still the same reflectiveness. It's a bit of a funny one to me, actually. Because, like, it doesn't look that dark, even. Went to room on a one. Vote now. You should start, might as well close the blinds now. While you vote, I'm going to close the mason blinds. I'm just out of the blinds. I mean, just the blinds. Making a thing of it. Right, what, I've got two votes for... God. Feels better, that feels better, doesn't it? Feel I'm a natural habitat. Mason Blinds! Coming on like X-Files, you've had John Wedger on your show talking to you about satanic ritual abuse that goes on in... and you haven't been presenting any evidence or been shown any, and you've had him on your show. <laughs> right, let's do it. Look, come on, we can do it a bit better than Luke just going woo woo woo. Do, 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 do. Right, you've had... Where are you, Chuffer? You've had Peter Folding go on your show and tell the world that he saw Nicola Bully on his sonar two days after he went in the search, but he lied to the entire world and you know, don't get me down that fucking, do you know what I mean? That he lied to the entire world from weeks after, for w weeks and months, and then when it came to his own skin, when it came to the fact that he was being in trouble on the COP report and it looked like he was in problems, he suddenly managed to conjure the most important piece of evidence he's ever found that saves his ass at the last minute and doesn't show it to anyone apart from you, a psychic woman who claims to have bought a special doll in a shop recently and got on Sky News for it, and you think we're the ones that have gone out. Body sculpture centipedes. With a bit of luck, Peter Frauding will fall off the edge of the planet with Luke in his boat. His supersonic radar should detect the end of the sea. Better still to make sure they both do not return the Bermuda Triangle comes to mind. <laughs> Super Chuffer owes five hugs. Peter Folding scans the Bermuda Triangle and finds... <laughs> Madeline McCann. <laughs> Tupac living on Jeffrey Epstein's island. <laughs> John Wedgie swimming <laughs> in the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> Look. You're the one that's done all the... I've done nutters of being nutters, yeah? I've exposed nutters for talking nuts, nuts stuff, lots of. Yeah, done that, been there, done that, right? And then you're the one that's engaging in conspiracy theories on your channel. Peter Folding stuff, unless backed by evidence, is going to be put down, and he's, to me, yeah, still a conspiracy theory made up by himself to cover his own ass, yeah? You're also presenting John Wedger's satanic panic conspiracy theories as if they're realities with no thought and cross-referencing. You did an episode on 9-11, didn't you, Luke? What happened on your 9-11 episode? What were you talking about on that? Did you do another one that had to get taken down? Did you? Did you do an, a, a live stream that got taken down because it got a bit conspiracy-minded? It was that, hello? <laughs> Is this the angle you want to go down? You fucking idiot. Do the room, Flat Earthers. Lord Lucan on the moon sucking off Elvis. Right, so we got here. 
Um, right, so the question is, can Flat Earthers go into Room 101? I've no. Got, uh, no. I've got Lizzie no. Bell, put them in. Put them in from Funky. We said no. Uh, to the room, Flat Earthers. Rustic Rambles, going in. I need a few more votes. It's looking like you're going in. Put them in, Suzanne. <laughs> I've got five to one here. Just need a couple more and they're going straight five in. Five to one. Classic. So the most unpopular gets binned off. And we're the bullies. <laughs> five on one here. Get him off. Get him gone. Luke, check out the Phoenix phenomenon every 138 years. I think Squirrel is a flat earther, but like, fair play for fair play for owning it. Um, you you are wrong though. But you're allowed your own opinions. Make up your own mind. In my opinion, I've told you my opinions. I've done my extensive videos on them, but I'm not going to make you think what I think. It's up to you what you think. That's fine. You know, no one's perfect, are they? <laughs> Reminder to anyone that's joining a little bit late, we've got Angry Alan coming up. Only a short bit because he's just really not performed this week. He couldn't even get it up properly this week. And we're going to follow that with a guy doing some preaching in the street and a few cooking videos from the Boglim himself. Right. I need one more vote for it to be going in. And it goes in. It goes in. Should Flat Earthers go into Room 101? Get him gone. Get him gone. Get rid. Get them gone. Give my eyes a break. You're still going to use your eyes. Get them gone. That was a short Scroll sniper, you have to send me an email about all this flat earth stuff. Will you? You're pretty, uh, pretty into it, aren't you? Right. Room 101. Send him an email, meaning don't type any more in the chat. I'm not going to read it. <laughs> and flat earthers, you're going to meet. You got flushed like a toilet. He likes it. Look at his face. <laughs> He's like, he's prepared that. He's got himself a toilet sound effect on his iPad and it's cheered him the fuck up that ass. He really enjoyed that, prepared that. And you know, he didn't go on the internet and find one. He recorded his own toilet flushing on his phone. You know that as much as you know, like Alan takes photos of kids at the park. <laughs> like, you know it, don't you? You just know it. Like, we all know it. I know it, you know. I'm looking for the right button here. I don't know what the right button is for this, really. That's my room on a one sound. Right. That's, that's the toilet being flushed. <laughs> okay, right. Flat Earthers, but I've got that off my chest. Um, one of the most bonkers conspiracy theories in the history of... Yeah, but it's not obnoxious and harmful in some ways. I think it is a bit of a gateway to see, you know... If someone's prepared to listen to that, they'll prepare to listen to some other stuff and maybe give you some... Like, one of the things I don't like is at the end of it, Martin Leake wants some money for a pen drive with fucking loads of pictures he got off Google. And I don't like that. Mankind, uh, one, of the, one of the most ludicrous suggestions on this round Earth. Okay, who would like to uh, who would like to put something into Room 101? Earth isn't perfectly round. Oh, who has got something? Members, priority first. Okay, this is your turn. Flat caps, Steve R said, flat caps. <laughs> I think flat caps are fine. This is your turn. If I was Squirrel Sniper and I was in that chat now, I, I, although you're not a member, are you? Like, like, but what you would do is you'd put round earth. <laughs> and then no, there's nowhere for anyone to live. <laughs> Spherical earth, that's got to go in. Jenny, right, okay, Jenny, what have you got? What have you got? Um, I don't know if I'm short or long sighted, but I use them for reading, so I suppose that's short. That's long sighted. You want to put Scientology? Right, Jenny's first. Jenny wants to put Scientology. Right, okay. I can't say I know too much about it, but give me your. Um, you need to let it. Okay, you know what? Well, you might take forever to type. Let me have a look into Scientology. I know obviously that like, Tom Cruise is like banging into it, isn't he? Scientology beliefs. Scientology describes itself as a study and handling of the spirit in relationship, relationship to itself others in all of life. Scientologists also believe that people have innate yet suppressed power and ability which can be regained if cleared of unwanted behaviour patterns. And I knew this section was going to go badly. Big ups, Andras, to add a little look. Yeah, Big ups, Slick Willie D. I think Martin's most likely saved his info since dial-up days. Um, you think he's got old, old stuff? No, 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 no. Like Martin, like, okay, he gets some stuff out of books. Like, he goes and finds old books that are out of print and, you know, old shit from... Um, charity shops but he's got hard drives just full of shit pictures he doesn't know what they are they're just random fucking JPEGs 
and like lots of them have come off Google. Don't don't think that he doesn't go on Google and find stuff. I've watched his shows where he's literally got fucking Google on the screen. Like, don't tell me they're not on Google. It's just a grift. If you're prepared to pay money for old rope, if you're prepared to listen to him talk a load of shit and then pay money for old rope, he's prepared to take the money and go up that local pub and just fucking piss it away on drink. So I just, I, it's just a grift. Like it's, it's paying his way so he doesn't have to do anything instead of that. Like he's lucky it's paying his way because it's just talking nonsense on the internet and then selling nothing to people who are happy to pay the money. Like it is a grift. Comforts. Okay. But you're allowed to think what you think, and I'm allowed to think what I think. Um, Jenny. But I think you do think it. You just think he might have saved more stuff from, from ages. Me a little bit more on this. But he wasn't always into that shit. He used to be like a builder, so like, or a, a labourer on a building site. So am I putting. Um, what is it? Is it a cult or what? Is it religion? It's not religion, is it? What is it? The Church of Scientology. You don't know how cults become sects, then become religions. Ooh, you need to watch more thus on Super Chopper. So, okay, so okay, you've got but this, straight... this section is going to go really badly because Luke is now going to have to learn on the cuff about what the person who's suggesting should go into 101 is, and they're going to argue that it should go in, and he's supposed to argue that it shouldn't, but really, he doesn't know what's going on now. Straight away, Jenny, you've, you've got me trying to put church into uh, room 101. It's all right, you know, like it's, like it's not been too controversial here before. I'll um, I'll, I'll put a church in. <laughs> you think. <laughs> You think it would be controversial to 86 Scientology to Room 101 because it's a church. <laughs> let's not get it, let's not go too heavy though. Um, right, Scientology. Body of beliefs related to practices created by created by L. Ron Hubbard. Fair enough, Slick Willie Deeg. Uh, if it, like, listen, his passion can be history, but the sale of a pen drive, like the, the information on there is not worth the money in my opinion. So we've got a difference of opinion on that. We are entertaining uh, Martin Leaker as a nice person that we would talk with, but I'm still allowed my opinions. He was in the Navy, fair enough. In 1911. Right, so it's only about 100 years old. So it's a, it's a belief. I'll allow you yours, though. That was made 100 years ago. So it's just by one guy, one dude made it up. Um, okay, it uses a counselling technique known as auditing developed by Hubbard to enable conscious recall of traumatic events in an individual's past. That's the sort of thing that Peter Folding and John Wedgie did on you. <laughs> or you did on that person in the care home when you held them down for nine hours overnight. Sorry, got that wrong. Held her down for six hours overnight. Uh, I'm not into this. I think, I think you've got a point. I think you've got a point there, Jenny. I'm not into this. Right, let's, let's, have, let's search something else quick. Um, Bear in mind, I've got this on sped up. So if you were to watch this Scientology? in original speed, it would be unbearable. Yeah, that's it. I'm lost. Do you know what? I'm lost straight away when it says, what have I done here? It's a set of beliefs invented. I'm reading this on the iPad, right? A set of beliefs and practices invented by the American author, Ron Hubbard. Um, is this loud? I've forgotten that. I might it is variously defined as a cult, a business, a religion, a scam. Um, right, it's about 100 years old. It's invented by one guy. Uh, say no more. Scientology. The Church of Scientology. Get into the room 101. Done. That got flushed. Right, we're two for two. Scientology goes in and Flat Earthers go in. We're off to a good start. Right, this is a big one. Do you think, basically, it was a good idea to just agree with whatever D20 Jenny says because you fucking love her because she's your favourite one, yeah? Just agree with it. Tom Cruise can go into room 101 too. Look how your curtains have made that effect on your face with the stripes. Right. Um, it's not his curtains. Umbrellas. Why would you want to put an umbrella in? Oh, Why would you want to put an umbrella in? Meaning. You know what I mean? You've got uses, but you can argue it. Right. Okay. You want to hear them argue it though, yeah? Because that sounded interesting, but we're not going to get to, are we? Now, here's my second pick. Right. Second pick. This one. Grinds my gears. This grinds my gears. This will be a good one then, because what was the first one? I've forgotten now. Flat Earth. This one grinds my gears. This really annoys me. This is worse than... I mean, am I allowed to say noncing? I'm not allowed to say noncing, am I? I would have said noncing straight off. And then, I don't know. What would I have said? I'd also probably say... Uh, people who have really strong opinions on stuff without fully researching it and having a grounded view of it. Like the way Alan does his racism, having never been outside his own back garden, like, you know, I don't know, racists. <laughs> More than 
More than flat earthers. I'd rather have a flat earther than these people. I don't okay. know if this happens in America, right? In the UK, we have certain etiquettes. Etiquettes. <sighs> the social etiquette, what I adhere to. Certain things that we just do, they're not law, they're just like, the kind of morals and the kind of just things that we take as... Morals. Unwritten laws, right? Now, a lot of people will relate to this. So, picture the scene. You're in a supermarket, right? You walk up to the checkout. Right, this is not going to be me very often because I'm not doing that very often, but yeah. You've got a bottle of milk. I have. Chocolate soy milk. You've got a loaf of bread. Okay. And you've got someone in front of you, a trolley full, like a two, three month trolley full of food, like they're getting mm -hmm. ready for the apocalypse, right? And everything's getting loaded on, right? Getting loaded onto the belt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the uh, quick checkout. You know, the what I do in this situation is I go to the uh, self-service checkout or I go to the, you know, where you get the cigarettes and stuff like that. People might stop you. Oh, you're leaving the store. No, I'm just going to where I get the cigarettes. I'm going to pay for these there. Or where you pay for the flowers and the, you know, there's another bit. There's a window. You can pay for stuff there. You don't have to fucking wait behind this person in the queue. You can do your own thing. So I just go there and I pay for my milk and my, my chocolate soy milk and my bread at the window where I get my cigarettes. Or if they complain about that, I just put it down and then I go to the uh, check. Like on the way out of the supermarket, there's the gas station, the gas the petrol station, and they sell the same things there. In fact, what am I even doing in the fucking supermarket if all I want is bread and milk? Why aren't I just getting that from the petrol station or somewhere else? Like, why am I standing behind this fucking person in the queue? I'm not doing this. They've not started yet. They're not being scanned yet. It's just all going on to the belt. And you're stood there with two items. Like I said, they've got hundreds of items. And they look at you. And they don't let you go in front. I've got to argue against it. You know, personally, it would annoy me a little bit, but I'd also just think, well, this is what these conveyor belts are for. They're already halfway through loading on their shopping. They Maybe they've got places to go as well. It's not their fault that I, in my position. So, like, they don't have to let me go in front. Like, it wouldn't anger me that much. I'd just, like, live with it. It's just like, welcome to the supermarket. <laughs> for, for Luke, this is some sort of, like, egregious offence. They don't know. Did you ask them? Did you say, excuse me, do you mind if I go in front? I've only got the bread and the milk. I don't mind leaving £5 for you to buy your bread and milk as a little thank you. How about it? You just think, fuck them and all their shopping and their busy life and their kids. Like, if they've got all this stuff, the next thing that comes into my mind is they're not planning for the bloody end of the world. They've probably got two kids and, a, you know, things happening and, like, lots of shopping to do. Like, can I help you with your bags would be the way that I'd make this go quicker. Because then if I help them with their bags and their packing, maybe it just goes quicker. Or like I say, I don't think these days you have to stand there in that situation. You can just get your bread and your milk in a slightly different location or use the other convenient methods of payment around the store. <laughs> well, they need to go into room 101. It happened to me the other day. I was in Lidl. Big ups to Lidl. I was in Lidl and I had one protein shake. Maybe Lidl don't have so many convenient places to pay then. But here's the top tip. If you want to get in and out quick, don't go somewhere that's not that convenient with the checkouts for your one protein shake. <laughs> one. And they have the biggest basket ever. Really slowly putting it on. Proper slow. Looked over to me. Saw my Did you go behind them in the queue and choose to stand there? Protein, protein shake. Didn't, wasn't bothered. Didn't care. And didn't let me go in front. In the UK, we have this unwritten code. If you've got a couple of items, maybe no, no more than four, and they've got a big shopping load and they're in front of you and they've not been started scanning This yet. is not an unwritten code, like I say, because I would think that if you've got lots and lots of stuff to do and you've got a big shopping thing, you might get on with your fucking shopping and like you don't have to look behind you and judge, well, they've got three items, so maybe I should let them go through, but this person behind them has also got two items, so then maybe I have to let them go through as well. And maybe I can't do my checkout until I've decided if this person who's got five items gets to go in front or not. Like, you just wouldn't. You just get on with your shopping, yeah? And then this guy is getting egg and huffy and complaining because he's took his two items and he hasn't even raised the issue and he hasn't said it's not an unwritten code and what happens if when it Luke's turn yeah I say oh do you want to go in front of me because you've got two items which I might do I might do that I'm not arguing against it in principle uh, because I'm an arsehole it's because I'm having to because of room 101 of course um, but I would say that 
I might do that and then the person might get through just by the ch oh sorry I didn't realise my card was going to get declined oh sorry I didn't realise I only got £2.50 and I need £3 and can you just wait here while I just run off and get a cabbage and I'm like hang on this doesn't have to happen I wish I hadn't let this person go in front of me fucking about with their stupid like they already made a bad decision trying to get in the queue with their one piece of item so no I'm not going to bow to your stupidity you go to the fucking checkout somewhere else you go to the checkout where they sell cigarettes or you go and buy your drink somewhere else more convenient and i'll just do my shopping in the fucking ascribed place where i have to put my shopping i'm already halfway through getting out of the trolley you should be able to go in front and if they don't let you in front they should go in to room 101 without hesitation who cares to argue with that because i think it's a no-brainer get it delivered <laughs> that was always that, isn't it? Well, let's say we're not getting it delivered. Let's say you're in this scenario. Hit like, by the way. Subscribe, you're, you're comment. Making, okay, subscribe, I you know? accept hypotheticals. I'm not stupid. I can understand hypotheticals, yeah? But what I don't accept is that the principle of these people having to go into room... And these are other people again. The thing that makes Luke angry again is another person in the supermarket in his way. Yeah? Right? So, this other person who's got loads of shopping who's in his way, they need to be eradicated from society. And I'm saying no. I'm saying no, I don't feel like that. But if I was forced into a situation where I was standing behind someone in a queue and I had one item and they wouldn't have let me go in front, I haven't asked them. I'm not allowed to ask them. Maybe I could just be bold enough to say, excuse me, do you mind if I quickly pop in front? I'm awfully sorry, but I've left the car on the meter and this is going to take ages. I can't seem to find another checkout and I don't mind leaving the, the change so that you can put it in the charity box if you want. Like, you know, just doing something nice or something. I don't mind helping you out with the bags after. Well, I do, because I'm in a rush, apparently. I'm in a rush now. Why am I in a rush? Look, just forget this. Like, anyway, like a very I forced, a very strict hypothetical situation. Do I have to be angry in this situation? Or can I just accept the world sometimes and say, well, this is going to take 10 minutes longer than I thought it would. I'll stand here and drink my drink. You know, like, what? that's all I was going to do anyway. I'm buying a fucking drink. I was going to drink it. So I might as well stand here and drink it and help this person with their shopping. Like, it doesn't all have to be fucking hell on earth, does it? I went to a supermarket and I waited in a queue. Subscribe. Um, yeah, that kind of share. Has anyone got anything to say about... Um, put, that, put that in the damn room. Does anyone have an argument against that? We've got Alan coming up, remember. So we're going to get some funny Alan in a minute. Because this is the whole point about it. It's like, if you've got a reason why... Are they wearing a mask or not? <laughs> I saw someone in the gym today wearing a mask. Like, come on, man. They um, might have immune deficiencies. <laughs> like, before the... Listen to this, right? I'm not going to go deep into this shit, but uh, before the um, COVID, I went on a little lads thing to... Uh, we went to Prague for on a... Um, what do you call it? Stag do. And... I actually wore a mask on the plane on, and in the, the little bus thing on the way there because loads of people I don't know all crammed up next to me. I don't want to get their germs. I'm about to have a weekend away. You know, and like people were like, like this was before the masks were even a big thing before the COVID. Like just because Chinese tourists used to wear them in our country and I was like, what are they for? And I'm like, well, that makes sense, doesn't it? It's got to help. I don't want to catch everyone else's germs if I can help it. I'm just going to do it. Like while they're all bust up in, against them or while they're all coming next to me in the aeroplane, just pop that mask on. I thought it was a good idea. Anyway, look, signal's rubbish at my cousin's, says Big Chris. We'll catch up later. Big ups, Big Chris. Thank you for the £5 super chat. Thank you. If the signal's rubbish, I'll have to press this button twice. Did David Icke penetrate you with his penis? Not that button. Disgusting! <laughs> now hold on, Lorraine. Now hold on, Lorraine. Right. Does anyone have a counter-argument against um, people not letting you through? Yeah, not understanding anyone else's situation at all. They might be in a really busy rush to get to the hospital because they've got dying parents or something and they've had to do this big shot because they've got to provide for like three children at home and their husband's away working along. Or I'm assuming it's a woman. I don't know why. Did he say it was a woman or am I being sexist here? Like, you know, I just it could be a man, couldn't it? Or whatever. Anyway, look, like they might have their own problems in life and they might not want to just let you swan on through because they might be wrapped up in their own world doing their own thing and they might not have even thought about you with your chocolate milk <laughs> we got a couple of items at the checkout is there any one of you so you were doing your you had your big shop right this is a Before, point if i was doing my big shop i would consider letting somebody through if they just you know and it, but it depends on if i look round and there's one person behind me with one chocolate milk and then i look down there and the kiosk is open i'm not going to let them through i'm just going to carry on and if they get eggy i'll say go to the kiosk you idiot <laughs> what if there's aldi there's no kiosk 
And I, you know, it's not on me to like to deal with your problem with your shopping habits. <laughs> But certain issues, like there have been times, of course, where I've let people in front of me. Of course, it only makes sense. But you do have to be careful because if you start that rule, as you said, it's a social rule. No people will ever be able to do a big shop because they will just be pushed in front of by anyone that's got three items at any given time. And if you saw someone with, this is a better way of envisioning it. If you saw someone with a bottle of milk and bread and some bog roll, yeah, would you let them through if you'd not started? Do you know what I might consider doing? I might consider doing this. If it depends, if it was you, I'd probably not. But if it was some nice person that I thought looked nice, you know, a nice person from the church or something, then I might say, give us that bread and milk, put it through first, beep, beep, on you go. You don't even have to pay for it. Put it on my shopping list. It's only a bit of bread and milk. You go on. You've only got one basket. Away with you. All right, let's carry on and just leave it at that. It doesn't have to be a big deal. Is there anyone that wouldn't? Forget that. Who wouldn't let them through? Let's let's talk. I wouldn't let you through now after it. you said all this. Shout out to Dr. Dre. Um... It I have to, matter, but you have to. I have to argue against you. This is your stream that you set up. We have to defend the position. You have to not let it in. Like it, it, we have to. That's the. That banner's could have gone in as like its own thing, but there's no debate. Big ups, John. Yeah, we will be showing AD, but only a little bit of him because he's been pretty fucking bleak this week. The crappy true crime stuff. I can't be bothered to watch that. It's crap, and it's not even relevant anymore in 2024. And then he did a little bit on his family tree, though. So. There is a, but there might be somebody that might. They might be like, no, I was here first. Kind of thing, which is a bad argument in my eyes, but... Um, so, Funky would let them go, of course. I want to know if anyone wouldn't let them go. Come on, there's got to be a troll in there somewhere. A troll? Surely. A troll? You've literally said the premise of the stream is that the chat is to take devil's advocate and argue against your position. And because one of them did so, and you all picked on them, and now they felt like bad, no one else wants to step forward. But I've done the good justice of arguing the case against what you've just said. Who wouldn't let them go? Do you think this is bad? Do you think when I cover it now, it makes me look bad because I'm arguing devil's advocate position that I wouldn't let them go. And now Scott looks stupid because he says he wouldn't let them go. Because you've sort of set up that premise. I'm only playing along. Like in reality, obviously, I would let people go. Like I'd pay for their shopping. It's fine. But you and your attitude behind me while I was busy with the big trolley full of nappies, no. You can get stuffed, entitled bastard. Someone said it in chat, feeling like it was Kelly, didn't they? said he was quite entitled. Yeah, it's the Alan, Alan Tate school of thought. Then you're going in room 101. Hit like. Hit like. That's a problem with this realm. Realm. You talk, you talk, you talk very mysteriously, don't you? Squirrel sniper. I've never seen you have a squirrel sniper. Before. Big up. Right. The realm chat. So we move on then. So we're all in agreement that like people that have massive trolleys full of food and they don't let you go in front of them when you've only got two items, they should all go into room 101. Are we all in agreement there? All vote now. Go and use Tesco Metro. You won't have this problem. Lizzie Bell, yes. Oh, you just reminded me of something, Lizzie Bell. <laughs> I'll email you. Fran, yes. Funky, yes. D to the O to the Jenny, yes. Yes, oh. yes, yes. From New Assel, yes. 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 Win. In, in, in from Suzanne Day. Win. Oh. Win. Rustic Rambles. Rustic oh, Rambles. Rambles. Yes. Very creative. Ugh. Did you know the courts describe it as a realm too for legal? Squirrel, squirrel man. I mean, <laughs> I love it. Squirrel sniper. You've got into it now. He's got into it and he's giving it him. I love it. <laughs> Luke won't be able to hack it. He won't be able to get the ideas. Hit like if enjoying. Go on. He might actually end up believing it all. So you never know. Funky and Jenny and... Funky. Rustic Rambles, some of my old, oldest uh, members. I don't have many members here. Um, do you mean they've been with you longest, with. or do you mean that they're oldest? I don't have PayPal. I don't have Patreon. don't have coffee. Tip me a coffee or whatever. No, um, dude. Luke, Luke, you did cash for questions, dude. Like, you literally said that you couldn't read chat unless they gave you a super chat. Dude. Come on. You're trying to throw shade around because people use the normal, like tippy systems that are available like i didn't invent coffee i use it because limmy very very popular very big very popular scottish content creator streamer comedian limmy uses it so do stop throwing that shade around um i'd rather get the money from advertisement revenue yeah you're not getting that though are you so where the fuck are you getting the money is peter folding supplying you with it or what because <laughs> you are not getting that and your membership system there is always super chat, like the only thing. 
Oh, there's always super chat though. So if you could give me a super chat, just just if just you could only give me a super chat, but you can just please do give me a super chat. Except, I feel weird. stop fucking going on about it, do you, Luke? Weird putting a PayPal account under my uh, under my videos. Here's a cat. I cannot do. Here's a, oh, where's the cat? Where's the cat? No, no offense to like anyone that puts PayPal underneath, but no offense to anyone that puts PayPal underneath. But here's some shade thrown at them. I agree with that one though. I think in the common parlance of YouTube. Doing the normal tippy systems is the norm. And then when people start putting direct PayPal, it feels a little bit like a step towards like a money oriented thing. And like the norm of YouTube, like across the board, is that the PayPal link is seen as a bit like a step too far. But the normal tippies thing, well, that is not. But you've thrown shade at all of it and you want super chats. <laughs> nah, not for me. Um, right, it looks like. Um even if an elderly person had less or more, I'd let them go or anyone disabled always. Even if... I think you should... Um, well, especially if an elderly person is behind you. Maybe. or well, that's discrimination, though. But, yeah, maybe... I mean, I just don't have to argue devil's advocate here, but maybe you would. But you can't say that because if you're halfway through unloading your shopping and you're not like... I'm not there to patrol the queue behind me and to understand what kind of problems people have and rank them in social order of who should get their fucking bags packed first. I'm halfway through emptying my shopping and there's other checkouts. It's this... It's the responsibility of the supermarket to deal with the customers. I'm one of the customers and I'm just emptying out my trolley onto the thing. If I was just pushing my trolley in and there she was the old lady, I'd say, oh, no, you go first. Go ahead. You know, of course I would. But if I park my trolley, I'm unloading everything. They're, I assume they're bipping it through. You didn't. You said it hypothetically they're not bipping it through. But how long till they start bipping it through? Because they start from the minute I start unloading, don't they? They don't wait for me to unload the whole trolley and then start bipping it through. No, it's just a stupid fucking... Last items. Did I read that right? It's starting to make me cross now. <laughs> right. Right. People that don't let you go in front of them at the checkout when you've only got a few items. They got flushed. They got flushed. There's the tippies. Hey, Scott, big up. The vegans love the live show. Super Chuffer owes three hearts. Let's go and feel this. We came to take win. Vegan taking the win. Yes. Follow ladies. Uh huh. And one ladies. Uh huh. Super ladies. Uh huh. Nah, two, set. Vegan power. I used to think it was a good idea to try and do every video about veganism on this channel, and I think, like, it was fun to do that for a bit, but it's nice just to have it as, like, a subtle thing that happens. But yeah, I, you know, if anyone's interested, you bring it up and I won't stop talking about it. <laughs> Can you shout me out? Can we shout? Sorry, I can't get the words out. Whoa, Suzanne! And also, if you're not vegan, you can still drink this. I'm not brand associated, but you can still drink alternatives. You can still have like a vegan alternative. You don't have to have a cow suffer just for a cup of tea. You don't have to do that. Oh, I don't like the way the nut milk tastes. All right, well, like you can tolerate it and get used to it because that's how all taste works. And then cows don't have to suffer. It's just a little option, little choice. You don't even have to do it every day. You can just do it for a little bit. You just get like, you know, an alternative. When you get the burgers in, you, you could try the Beyond Burgers, not because I'm brand associated and like, you know, and this and that, and not even because they're better for you cholesterol wise or fats wise or any of that, which they are, but uh, you could do it so that a poor animal doesn't have to suffer just once for one dinner every now and then. And it doesn't have to change your life dramatically. And then once you do that, then you're on like a process. It's like a step by step thing little step-by-step -step thing, and then you might start doing more and less of this. And before you know it, you'll be telling everyone every time you go to a restaurant about how chuffing vegan you are, and you'll be going on about it all the time just so you can get your vegan card. Because to get a, your vegan card, to be proven vegan, you have to tell everyone. Of, all right. Suzanne. Big up, Laura Parkin. Cutie up, pie. Suzanne, Cutie pie. I'm cute. I'm cute. Thank you very much. Very kind of you, Suzanne. Send in love. Um, can you shout me out to 10k subscribers on YouTube? When is your next Peter Falding post? I know who he is. Can you shout me out to 10k? How many subscribers have you got, William? <laughs> what Thank you, Susan. About? Really appreciate that. What happened to Room 101? Like that, can't I? Yeah, I have to flub out it. Did someone give you a super chat? Is that what's happening? Much respect to all for Suzanne. Right, so William, can you shout me the out chat to 10k gone. subscribers on YouTube? Are you, are you are you on YouTube? Obviously, you're on YouTube. Are you have you got? Are you nearly at ten thousand subscribers? Oh no! I'd, I'd, bit, your chat, I mean. Where's your chat gone? Luke, you, Luke, by my Luke. host, 
basically. And I've got five things, but we're going to do... I'm going to do... Because I, I would say court hangers can't go into room 101 because they have... Hang on. Yes. Yes. In, in, in from Suzanne Dela. You nearly at 10,000 subscribers. Yeah, Suzanne gave him 25 quid. Anyway, shout out to William Budd. Uh, if, if, if you are on your way to 10,000 subscribers, then... Go and check out, I don't know what your channel, your channel, William? I need to know what your channel is first before I can shout it out. <laughs> yeah, it might be like, you know, nationalist racist propaganda channel, mightn't it? So you want to be careful. Not that it is. I'm not suggesting it is. That's really kind. Do you know what? I'm just going to say something, right, about YouTube is an absolute slog. It's hard work. Is it? A lot of effort goes into it. Should be fun. Um researching and writing and you've not put a lot of effort and researching and writing and doing this and when peter folding came on you didn't do a lot of effort researching and writing and when you had john wedgie on you didn't do a lot of effort researching and writing it's oh come on john wedgie told you all the things and you sat there and went yeah all did it was it does it was it sent him an email he came on you show i told you all about this stuff this is not. The last video was Manchester is bonkers. Meditation. Meditation. Yes. Meditation. Yes. This is not research. My guests, how I met my guests. It's just you talking in a room. Steak and chip sandwich hybrid, which this. is is a sandwich, which is basically like a sloppily made average steak sandwich, but with fried potatoes instead of bread. So there's no research gone into that. <laughs> Scratching scratch cards, eating grass soup, talking of that poor boy in the river, trying to promote Peter Folding. There is no, this is not <laughs> what you just said doesn't tie up <laughs> and going out and about thinking of different content and all that kind of stuff and like i said i want my revenue to come from the advertisement which which you know it isn't great i'm not gonna lie to you but for me having a buy me a coffee or the cat's here we're doing this again hiya can't hear what you're saying. No, how many people have buy me a coffee? A few now. A few. And how, when I say a few, I mean in the circles that we sort of, you know, colloquially mix on YouTube. What, who's he watching that's got buy me a coffee? I feel like he's trying to have a pop at the chuffer, but he is also having a pop at loads of other people as well. Like loads of people use buy me a coffee. <laughs> it's just the same as the YouTube super chats, except it comes up on the screen so people can see it and it has the the animation we can change the animation so there's like little benefits there it's fun it reads it out so that's fun and for me i get a slight more of a cut i don't know what the exact percentages are i can't remember off the top of my head but it's like 12 or 17 percent they take on buy me a coffee whereas on youtube they take like a bit more they take like 30 percent so it's like financially just a bit better for me and the people that do the tippies i suppose some of them like the fact it comes on the screen some of them like the fact that i get a slightly more benefit and they don't have to use it at all i never say hi welcome to the show this is buy me a coffee you follow the link and you do this and this and this i never like i'm only bringing it up now because you're talking about it it just sits there on the screen just like you know it's, it's like vicky marie does it yeah as well like it's, it's a normal sort of thing limmy a great comedian i don't know anyone who doesn't know Limmy, but if you don't know Limmy, then I'll just quickly put Limmy on like that. Limmy, just Limmy. Have we got? I, I'm just trying to find one where he's actually got the coffee thing on the screen as well, isn't it? Because otherwise, it doesn't make my point for me, does it? Um, meow. Limmy stream. What should I put? Limmy stream coffee. Like, Limmy's got, he used to have the thing up in the top left. He used to have the thing in front of him like I've got. Like, there's one. I was uh, up here. I suddenly need to go in. That's Limmy talking. You see, it's got coffee.com in the bottom left corner there. This is Limmy. The toilet. Hmm. And I get up and I go into the, the whole lot. Fucking hell, man. So, bear in mind, like, top, top, mainstream, successful, top normal, 
normal top, you know, that's where I've got it from. Have you got it in a outdoor? Not right now, no. Oh, hang on. Hiya. I can't hear what you're saying. Can you come in and help Dom? Not right now, no. <laughs> Just you would let someone in front of you in the supermarket. You would let someone in front of you in the supermarket. But you won't go in and help Don. Whomever the fuck that is. They obviously need your help. Could just tell them to vote on the next one or, you know, put on a little video. Like I pop in and out sometimes to go in and out, don't I? Like, it's all it's all right. You, I would have gone and helped Don, to be honest. I'd have gone to help Don. I have to uh, go and help. Oh, it carried on a bit then. Wait, wait. <laughs> Just been asked to uh, go and help. It went on. She went back and she went, no, he can't. He's doing something. No wonder he's in the conservatory. Oh, there'll be questions. There'll be questions. There'll be questions. Um, we won't ask them now. We'll just move on. But there'll be questions over on Twitch later. <laughs> I have to go and help move something, but I made it aware that I was busy until about seven o'clock. He's fucking hell. Is this your job? Are you on a break? They asked you to help move something. It can't take that long. What's the saying then? You were saying about what a lovely guy you were and how you would let somebody in front of you if they were like, I don't know, elderly or disabled in the supermarket. That's what you were saying. You were saying if someone was in front of you in the soup or coming up in the supermarket and you had a lot of shopping and there was somebody that was elderly, you would let them in front of you because you're such a nice guy. That's what you were saying before you refused to go and help Dom. Yeah, I, um... I don't feel comfortable having a... PayPal, in a, like a, a link to PayPal. Well, shut up about it then. Shut up. I don't feel comfortable about wearing your clothes on my stream, or I don't feel comfortable about sitting next to Alan on a bus. But I don't have to do either of those things, so I won't be talking about them. <laughs> you just don't have to do it. Are you saying that I should feel uncomfortable about it? Because I don't feel uncomfortable about it. I think it's fine. I think you're being weird. Trill. Only super chat. That's all. That's, that's it. Um, all the creators do whatever you want, but it's just not my thing. Right, so. Where were we then? I got a bit of sidetrack with, um, with that really generous super chat from Suzanne. No, you got si sidetracked because someone came to ask you for help and you just said, fuck it, I'm busy. And then I told you I was going to be busy, so you've got no right asking me to help you move that heavy thing now. We'll move it later when I feel like it. Bud wants me to shout. I hope they're not trapped under something. Shout him out to take it. <laughs> Maybe get Luke on the show. Nice shout out, Dylan Fowler. Subscribers. I don't know what your channel is. I don't know what, yeah, your, what channel do you do on your channel. Yeah, what you do on your channel. Right. Go in, all I'm going to say is, like, go and check out William Bud's channel. Uh, I don't <laughs> know what it's about. I can't really shout out. It might not It might not um, go with my values or beliefs. Do you know what I mean? But <laughs> William Bud has a channel. Um, so, so people think that's a fake laugh. It's not. It's not. not. It's I like, no I can't believe it. It's an um, I can't believe it laugh. I, it's, oh my God. I don't know. I, I don't really know about the coffee thing. I've, I, I think I set it up for like a week and then it just, it didn't sit with me. Oh, you've had it. You did no. it. You So you did it and you don't do it. So before you were ethically bereft and now you're ethically wonderful again. Like a wash with the love of Jesus again. But before you were some sort of ethical scumbag and we have to talk about it all the time during this live stream, which is supposed to be a room. Why don't you put coffee.com into room 101? <laughs> Actually, wait, wait, I could probably got. Wait, I've probably got a more appropriate. I like that high heels dancing. That's my favorite. 
high heels on my tippies. But I'm going to quickly look to see if I can get a coffee. In fact, I'm going to highlight my own thing, aren't I? Um, support me on coffee. Support Super Chuffer on coffee. Uh, this is my page on coffee.com. But don't do it quite yet. Give me a second because I'm going to change the tippies thing. So it's something from room 101 quickly. Um, enable browser notifications. No. Uh, what I want to do is go to settings, buttons, and I want to do the stream alerts. And this is how good it is. I think it's good looks. I can do this really quickly. I can change my GIF and I can search for room 101 like that. Search. And <laughs> it's not come up with the room 101 you think in the UK. It's not come up with that at all. It's come up with a load of weird shit. So instead of that, I'll put Frank Skinner. Because he's the host. And there you go. There's Frank Skinner. So, but that's Dave, hypothetical. It's not Room 101. Um, it looks nearly like Room 101. So we could use that. We'll use this one. We'll use... Oh, should we use this one? I don't really want this one. It's just... It's him giving someone a fist bump. Look, I'll do you a test. I'll do you a test and you can tell me if you want this one. I'm wasting everyone's time now, aren't I? You ready? It's raining again. I couldn't Someone be sent tippies. This is just a test. Super Chuffer owes three hugs. It's worse, if anything, isn't it? I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm going back to the high heels dancing. If anything, that was worse. I don't know why I chose that. That was stupid. I'm going back to... Ooh. <laughs> Sexy shoes. Alan likes the clip-clop shoes, doesn't he? That's why we chose that. There's loads of options. When I typed in high heels, there's loads of options of all different sexy shoes doing walking. So I'm just going to choose some sexy shoes. That's much better. That's much better. Bit of sexy footsie under the table. If anyone wants that, they have to tippy though because it's a bit saucy. Um, so that's how that works. It's really good. And if anyone does a stream and, you know, wants to know what it is, I did the link in chat and this is what the page looks like. And um, it's good. It's a tippy system. It's good. Thanks very much. Right, back to this. It's PayPal, not as Patreon. So, um, right, anyway, so... Right, we put that into Room 101. Right, Suzanne. Of course, would you say that you were happy to accept money from Peter Folding as well? Did he give you any money? That's a question that I wouldn't mind asking. You're definitely next. Uh, what do you want to put into Room 101, Suzanne? Who got one? Who paid for the videographer that you used for the Peter Folding stuff? I'm going to give Suzanne a second to... Coat hangers. Coat hangers. Coat hangers. I'm sorry, what now? Cash for sexy legs, it is, yeah. It is. Bye. It is. I could press the test button, but I'm not doing it. It's too saucy. I, could, I need to test it because I need to rearrange where the GIF sits on the page because it might uh, be up, up a bit. It might be a bit up. I can move it around, you see. The animation where it sits on the page. It might be a bit up. I think it'll be all right. It should be in the middle anyway. It's all sexy. Carry on, Luke. Oh, 137 subs, and you want, you want me to shout you out to 10,000? I don't think I've got the power to do that, William. I've not got 10,000 myself. <laughs> um, but good luck. Keep grinding. Whatever you're doing on your channel, keep grinding. Don't give up. Um, subscribers will come. Keep being honest to yourself. Keep integrity. Um, don't be swayed by other people. Are these your uh, tips? <laughs> uh, stick to your beliefs and um, never so you're sticking. Character. So we're sticking, to the, we're sticking to the Andrew Tate stuff. We're sticking to all that. We're sticking to the Sam Smith stuff. You've taken the Sam Smith video down. Doing content that you, that makes you happy and you believe in and um, don't just follow the, the trend or what people are all kind of jumping on. Like that. when you got coffee.com and then decided later you didn't want it. That's sticking to your beliefs and not following the trend, yeah? Like when you just started talking about the Nicola Bully case out of nowhere, ha having no grounding in any relationship to any of it for no reason. That wasn't just following the trend. That was sticking to your beliefs, yeah? I just, I mean, I'm just, I think it's okay to follow a few trends. You probably do want to do that if you're doing social media. Don't get me started. Advice to you. Good luck. Grass soup. 
And we are right. doing so, Alan. Listen, I, I know people are like, where's Alan? Where's Alan? We've been on for ages. Where's Alan? Alan is going to be a bit, Alan's like, your, you know, your headliner. He's going to come on and do like three songs and then he's out. He's not going to be that good, but he's got, we've got him for 10 minutes. But this is enjoyable fun. And like, this is your warm up. So enjoy it, you chuffers. This is your grass soup. I should, maybe I should put him on the thumbnail because it's a bit more him tonight, but. I'm trying to get clothes in and out of the wardrobe. Okay, okay. But well, then what are you going to hang your clothes on, Suzanne? This is the thing. How, you got a new, how would you do it? How would you be hanging your clothes up without the humble, without the, without the beautiful coat hanger? Put them in a drawer. If we don't have coat hangers, what are we doing instead? You need to have something. You need to have a solution here. Otherwise, what we're doing is throwing our clothes onto the floor. Drawers. Throw them in a pile on the floor. <laughs> You've got to give me better than that, Suzanne. Right, coat hangers, so coat right. If you have, it's funny that we're doing a live and we're talking about coat hangers. If you've got coat hangers and th like this jumper came off a coat hanger and I put it on really, really easy and I took it off really, really easy. <laughs> so I have no issue with the coat hanger. Do you know what, Suzanne? You've got my love yet, but it sounds like a you problem. It sounds like a bit of a you problem to me. <laughs> Don't sound like an everyone else problem. I've just You've just given me a really nice super chat, but... I find it quite relatable to think that when I try and pull something off a coat hanger, sometimes it gets stuck on the damn coat hanger. I find it quite relatable to think that when I try and hang something up on a coat hanger, it doesn't sit properly and it falls to one side and then it slides down and it falls off. So that's the way I feel about that, thank you. I don't know. Well, I'll tell you what then. Let's not leave this down to me. This one. Because... Alan is a bit more fun to watch. We have got him. He is our headliner. Uh, I'm going to run it this way tonight and you can deal with it. Like, if you want the Allen, you can stick around for the Allen. We're having fun and we're on the way. It's like a rock and roll show where the big act is coming up at the end and he's going to be a bit disappointing. So, I, I would say coat hangers can't go into room 101 because they have great use. This is uh, painful. All my, all my, I've got, because of the way I am, I've got OCD and like legit. Have you? Legit diagnosed OCD. Really? I have like my hoodies, like Adidas original hoodies, other brands are available, all like in one section, colours. Um, then I've got like other jumpers and stuff like that. Then I've got a Gap, then I've got T-shirts, then I've got like polos, then I've got like gym T-shirts, scruffy T-shirts, um, coats. So I, I I, would be lost without the humble coat hanger. So, but we'll vote now. Who who wants to put coat hangers in room? Okay, this is, I skip, skip. I can't, yeah, you're right. I can't listen to him like, vote on coat hangers. We're skipping coat hangers. Well, coat hanger. Um, they work great for me organising my stuff. I know you like coat hangers. To put them into room 101. Um, but on this occasion, sadly, coat hangers. They can't go into room 101. Okay. Right. My next one. I, my next one is... Right. So this is not about vegetarians or vegans. Ooh. It's about people that don't eat meat. Right. Which are what? That's fine. Right. No problem there. We're people not going to piss off the vegetarians or the vegans. We're just going to start talking about the people that don't eat meat. Right. Who are they? Not the vegetarian ones or the vegan ones, just the people that don't eat meat, yeah? People that don't eat meat, yeah. but, but, but the imitation fake meat that looks and that looks like meat and represents meat. So they're eating the very thing that they don't want to eat. In the, they're eating the very thing that looks and represents the very thing they don't want to eat in the first place. Paradoxical, I'll say. No. Not paradoxical. It's a substitute for something they've been conditioned to enjoy over their lifetime. They've been taught that it was the right thing to do. They've been fed it since they were a child. And if you understand how tastes work, this is me being a little bit serious now, but if you understand how tastes work, you didn't like broccoli. The only taste you enjoyed when you were a child was sweet. That's the only one you're programmed to enjoy. The rest of it you have to acquire. So you eat a bit of it, you go, eh, eh, and you eat a bit more, and you go, eh, eh, and then you eat a bit more, and you go, I quite like this. So meat's a bit like that, or animal flesh, you could call it, is a bit like that. You wouldn't suggest that sitting down to a big steak of human flesh is going to be up your street, would you? You wouldn't think that a big, nice steak of human flesh is going to float your boat. But it might do, because you're so used to cooking and eating flesh that it seems normal to you. And then, if that's the case, when you sit down for a family meal and everyone's eating turkey at Christmas, you might want something that's similar to go on your plate just to complete the meal with the vegetables and the stuff so that you can just join in and be part of. It's an easy way to move away from the normative cooking in our society to an alternative without having to redesign your entire cooking style. But vegan food, this will surprise you, right? Vegan food, when you go in the supermarket, it, all the food is vegan. It's the animal products that have to go in their own section 
that are not really food that get put in their own weird butcher's section. The rest of it, all the fruit, all the vegetables, that's all vegan. It doesn't have to go on the vegan shelf. It's all vegan. The bread is all vegan. You know, all this stuff is vegan, like all over the show, uh, but they don't put it in their own section. So the reason we have these alternatives is because lots of people have been conditioned to enjoy food of a certain style and they're looking for alternatives as they go on the journey to become more healthy and to become more ecological and, of course, for the animals. So it's a good idea, it, obviously borne out economically by the idea that they are quite successful, those businesses that do that. So just to shorten that down, it's people that don't eat meat Right, vegans or vegetarians, fine. But then they want to eat like no meat bacon or like fake chicken. So something that looks like chicken, but it isn't chicken. Something that looks like bacon, but it's not bacon. And also, looks like sausage. not every vegan does want to do that. Like after a while, you, you start to think, well, I don't need it to look like a chicken, to be honest. I'm not, I'm not obsessed with eating an actual chicken. But like, you've even seen things that look like cake that aren't cake. I don't know. It's not. Oh, they look like chickens, but they're cake. Oh, we're getting another, getting another visitor. Hang on, we're getting another visitor. I've got my feline visitor. Luke's got his visitor, visitor. Getting another visitor. Hang on. Where is my desktop audio filter? I've got my lovely background music cruising along behind me, but I'll pick this one up a bit with the compressor. Let's hear it. Hold on, someone's trying to come in. Just, uh... Oh. Come in. The duster. The duster. Just, uh... Luke will know, because he's, like, OCD about stuff. I'm not taking the piss out of mental health. Like, he'll know where the duster is. Bit of a huff there. Bit of a close of the door as well. They're not happy with Luke. Live TV, eh? Live TV. It's not TV. Uh, yeah, so I don't understand, like, if you don't eat meat, right, then why would you want to have fake no-meat bacon? Because there are lots of people that like the taste of bacon and the smell of bacon and it completes certain dishes that are quite common, like a BLT, for example. Well, how would you do a BLT with no L, uh, no B? Uh? Well, you could put anything in it. You could have any kind of sandwich, but you could do a vegan BLT, couldn't you? And then everyone could just enjoy the BLT and they go, oh, I didn't know that wasn't have animals in it. Oh, I didn't know I could eat food without animals in it. It helps to make the process. Like, it's f Why not? <laughs> Oh, why not? Because you are repelled by the idea of animal flesh. So why would you want to recreate bloody animal flesh to eat? Yeah, some people don't. Some people are. Yeah. Why do you want to eat something that looks like um, that looks, looks like bacon, or something that looks like chicken? Because it's healthier. If because it rep bacon and like vegan sausages and vegan chicken and all that kind of stuff. It represents chicken and bacon and sausage. No, no, no. Well, sausages, they don't represent pigs, do they? They're a processed form of it, so it's less like what it actually is. Like the actual animal flesh with the fat and the gristle and the bone and stuff, that's been processed and now it's a sausage. So sausages are sausages <laughs> and animal flesh is animal flesh. And when you look at bacon, chicken and sausage, it's from an animal. So my argument with, I don't get that. I don't understand it. It makes no sense to me. Well, what you should do is you should go and try those foods and see what you think of them before you judge them. Now, I, I can't even, it's hard to even kind of explain it because it makes, it makes zero sense to me. So let's take the no meat bacon, right? Which looks like bacon. Are you eating that because in your mind you've been tricked to think that it's bacon? No. If so, eat bacon. What? Or if it's the flavor of the ingredient that is making the fake bacon, yeah. just have a jar of that. Just sit there with a spoon of that. Well, that would be fucking horrible, wouldn't it? Just eating a, a jar of food flavouring. Like, you're a chef, aren't you? You understand mouthfeel. You, you eat a jar of... I, I've had enough of this. We are going to move on to Alan now because he just suggested that if you like the taste of bacon, and this goes for people that like bacon as well, I would have you know, if you like the taste of bacon, why don't you sit and eat a jar of food flavouring that tastes like bacon? If you like the taste of butter, 
Why don't you just sit and eat butter? <laughs> Grass soup. We'll come back to this. I'm not going to. I'm not letting this lie. <laughs> We're coming back to this, but I do see there's been some call for the armchair detective in chat. I do see that you've hung on for him. You've been a good bunch, and I do think it's time to bring out the main act. And I've got other videos for us all to enjoy. But some of you just like are here for the hardcore, and like when it's Alan, it's Alan. And then once he's done, he's gone, and you, you're out. So I'll, I'll give you that. You know, I'll give you the chance to get on with your life. <laughs> this is. Oh, look at his face. This is Angry Alan. Wait, wait, wait. Let's get what... We, we can't just have Angry Alan straight. Let's get... Uh, where's his applause? Where's his applause? Ladies and gentlemen, bringing to you all the way from... Well, I know his address, but... <laughs> all the way from Ex Exmouth, Devon. Not, not specifically, I'm not, I mean, he published his own address on the internet, so it's fair use, I'm allowed to say, but I'm not specifically doxing him, not specifics. All right, so calm down. You need to start, you know, you, you want him. There he goes. That's what you want. Bringing to you, all the way from Devon. He's about to tell you about it anyway. The world famous. The world famous. Here he comes. You know it. You like it. It's your favourite. He's the best. Wait, BCTV asked, what's my opinion on 3D printed food? Uh, it could work. I mean, I don't know. I think fiber's important in diet, so I, I, I don't know how much fiber you're printing in 3D printed food, but um, it can have its applications, I suppose. I'll be open-minded to any future food production ideas that can increase efficiency, help feed the world, but I don't know if 3D printed food is... Feed, I think that's designed to reduce jobs and just have fast food come out of a pipe, but I don't know. Um, we'll see. I'll, I'll, I'll arrange a bit. Anyway, back to this. AD, 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 AD! AD, 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 AD! Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name's the Armchair Detective. I'm a little bit late. I wanted to start 15 minutes ago. My name is the Armchair Detective. My name... I can't even get the internet working properly. Hello, my, my ladies name. and gentlemen. My name's the Armchair Detective. That's not your name. I'm a little bit late. I wanted to start 15 minutes ago. Well, my beloved Chelsea uh, were playing Newcastle Town, and it was close. We won 3-2, so normally I switch it off, but I couldn't. You don't normally switch it off. You normally come late and pretend that there was some reason. Oh, there was a technical issue. But today, you've just told the truth for once. That's all. I had to go to the bitter end, and it cost me a quarter of an hour. And that's cost what. you a quarter of an hour, but you might have won the bet. A little bit late, so apologies, but... There's no doubt in my mind that Alan doesn't gamble the fucking house on Chelsea every time they play. We've got another win, Chelsea. And also, the internet problems are at his end, of course. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> How are you all, all right? Yeah. How many people here? Thousand. Good, thousand, just like the old days. See that behind me? That's my um, family tree, eh? It's not, not your fam it's not your family tree. What Alan is fetching down now, what Alan's fetching down now, and God bless you if you've got one of these on your wall, but I believe there's a sort of, it's not a scam entirely. We have many, many it's not entirely a scam, but what they would do is you go to the market, right? 
and you'd go up and you'd look around the market and there'd be one of these at the market and it's just like loads of these in a big box and you go through alphabetically you find your name and there's your coat of arms and there's your facts about your family and everybody's got a name haven't they you've all got a name so you look through there the most common names you find it and you think oh i'll buy that because it's about me and the people who make them don't necessarily have the correct exact facts and it doesn't mean anything because your name that dates back to a long time ago is this name. It doesn't mean that your recent family tree, your DNA, your genealogy, you know, you're not directly connected with whatever they found out that happened in 1800, 1800 under this name. Not directly necessarily because you actually have the same name in today's world. It's not exactly how family trees work. But for Alan and also, you know, quite well for alan specifically he's quite prepared to like i think he's bought this i think he's bought this and i think he thinks it's brilliant but he doesn't realize where the scam is is that most of this information will just be generic nothing and they will say something that you could probably find in any old like wikipedia about your family name and just sell you the thing who knows if even the coat of arms here that looks like the coat of arms for middlesbrough for crying out loud and then it's a bridge with a load of stuff over it well talking about the coat of arms specifically just quickly um, because obviously I was prepared for this because I knew that's what we were doing. This website says the coat of arms has got the bridge on it down here. This one does say it's got the bridge on it and you can buy it for 10.29. So that proves it then. But obviously if you're running a website where you're selling coats of arms to people, you're probably just going to put together a fucking coat of arms, aren't you as well? Like it might not have to be exact exact. And this information could be found in the census. It can be found very, it's like publicly like available information. So it's a very easy website to shonk together just to get free money in a way, isn't it? It's almost the sort of grift that Alan would do. Because you get, look, you can buy it, you get a certificate, you get all this stuff. And that is produced on the computer by an AI, like just cut and paste the thing in the middle, cut and paste this and this, and then it's done. And it's 50 quid. And it's just like, I feel like people are getting ripped off for something that, I don't even know if this is verifiable and it might be verifiable it might be accurate but like it's mainly just selling products with your things printed on them and the reason that they get to sell them to you is because they belong to you because it's got your name on it and it's special to you so with a tiny little bit of information from a census like they can just stick that on a mug and now you're buying it so I think it's a bit of a scam, really. I think the actual... I mean, I know, I know a load of you will know about your family tree and your family history and stuff. Like, you, I, this is not exactly where you go to find that out, is it? Not that sort of place. This is where you go to buy a mug with your coat of arms on it when everyone likes that. But it's kind of meaningless, really, because I don't think Alan legitimately has a coat of arms. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just some old nonsense, really. But let's see what he's got to say about it. It'll be funny. Um, and he, I believe, is going to try and take some like selfish pride out of uh, what may have happened in the past but done by people with a similar name like it's weird but you know this is the way he's going to roll with it years of history i do this for just people that are in history a minute before the show starts i'm going to be doing the Manny mccann don't worry but i wanted to tell you about this it was given to me by a family member as a present a while ago from a charity given to you by a family member as a present so that's either true or he bought it himself but what's also likely is he could have taken it from a family member this might be from his parents or it might be that someone gave it to one of his family members because it's got the name on it and they thought i don't want this old tat i'll give it to dad because uh, you know i like old stuff i'm old myself now aren't I? that's not an old thing family name history um right and it's got a seal of approval from the from the government it's got, see what I mean about it being a scam? It's got a seal of approval from the government. So that proves it. The government. <laughs> Signed, the government. Right. <laughs> so. Anyone can print that out. The English surname Vinicum is a, a copriopanic origin. Being derived... I didn't understand what he said. I don't think he understood what he said. ...from the name of a location. Now, they're writing in oldie worldy English. It's not they're not writing in oldie worldy English. It's a font. Not easy to write. Even dyslexic's not relevant to this. It's like... In this instance, the, either Vinicum in Credenton, Devonshire, 
or Deniscum in the Isle of So this is actually correct. And like I said, this is where they do this. This, you know, this company that sells these things is they'll get the most basic, simple fact. And yeah, like a little bit of research on the internet, like the simple Google thing, will tell you that uh, it's about this place. Um, what did he say? It was on here earlier. I had it on here earlier. I had it open earlier. Yeah, but he's, he's right in saying that it's from a certain place in Devon, the name. Yeah. Right, it's evolved from that. The thing is, Alan's right about this because he's reading off this thing in front of him that he's read before. Right, where it comes from Vinicum and Quedden. I can tell you that, government, because all my family are from Devon. That's not... Just because your family are from Devon isn't the facts of where your name came from. You've read it off that plaque. I, I could tell you that, Dennis government. In the Isle of, they're writing in oldie worldy English. It's not easy to write. Even dyslexic's not relevant to this. It's like... In this instance, the, either... Vinicum in Crenson, Devonshire, or Deniscum in the Isle of Wight, where it comes from Vinicum in Crenson. I can tell you that, government, because all my family are from Devon, right? So they got that right. They said they told us it's from Crenson in Devon. Crenson's where I was born in Exeter. Crenson's about five miles away. So remember I was telling you last night that 15 minute cities, right? We we never went anywhere as Vinicums. This was like... That's not a good thing, that you never went anywhere. Also, you lived in the same place for hundreds of years and then didn't make anything of yourself as a family, a, not like a notable, known, historical, you know. Oh, sorry, we, we do live in this really large manor house, but it was passed down from generations after notable Vinicum successes over the years. None of that. <laughs> just we never got anywhere with our lives. We always stayed in the same place. We just never went anywhere. We're just still here. I... 16 something i was in devon and i ended up what and also i'm not i'm having to pop at alan obviously for a bit of fruity fun so if anyone is from the same place as their ancestral home that's fine that's fine <laughs> well i was born in exeter creditors about five miles away so remember i was telling you last night that 15 minute cities right we we never went anywhere as finicums this was like 16 something i was in devon you weren't in Devon. You were not in Devon. And I ended up being born in Devon, like, wow. <laughs> you then ended up being, you did get born in Devon. But 1600, Mr. Vinicum, was not you. <laughs> it's like, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, does it? And it the apple doesn't fall far from the tree is like saying your son is also a bit of a crook. Because you're a bit of a crook. That's what that means. It's not that your family never went anywhere in the world and established themselves, connections, you know, spread out, growth. You stayed in the one tiny village the whole 400 years, 800 years of past. You just stayed there, stayed there, stayed there, never amassed anything or achieved anything. The only notable thing you found in your family history is a plaque that says the name is old. <laughs> interesting i will do this show later on but is this ad trying to take your advice and talk about himself and stuff in the first 15 minute of his stream says toffee maybe it is maybe it is if that's the case well done but please do it with the internet working <laughs> so we could so you don't look like you're filming on a potato and please like you know don't just talk complete nonsense but it's not that bad anyway listen uh i'm not again people live in places have old names it's no big deal we live today in my opinion, I've got ancestral history. We could go through it. I could try and do top trumps on how my, like, the achievements of my ancestors. But I didn't do any of those things. They did them. And that means that I'm not going to take any direct pride, because pride's not a virtue. Remember? Remember who we're sponsored by today? Pride's not a virtue. And also, I'm not going to take on the responsibility for the guilt of anything that was done by my forefathers or ancestors, insofar as our country was built on the slave trade in ways whatever happened in Ireland, like, I can't go around being guilty for all of that and saying, well, my great-great-great-grandfather did this or that and therefore I should be punished. Like, in the same way as I'm not going to say my great-great-great-grandfather did this or that, therefore I should be proud and I'm the one that takes on the... They, I'm proud of them and what they did. You know, I'm proud of my ancestors and what they did, but I'm not responsible for what they did, so I don't take that pride because my name is that. I have to carry on my life and live um, in such a way as to... Um, like 
what's the word like i have to make sure i do things in my life so that they would feel proud of me so that i carry on that legacy otherwise the legacy dies like alan has failed his family name sullied it made you know driven it into the ground caused it to be a laughing stock so in this way alan his ancestors would be disgusted with him for all the work they put in if they ever did god help us if life is like this and like you know 100 years ago 200 years ago there was an alan running around do you know what i mean imagine in 1600 it's like blackadder alan's always been like alan but like yeah alan has sullied and shamed his family name at this point he is the shame of his family name and he's doing it all live on youtube with a, a pride and a, and a wave and that's a shame for the other people that share his name and like the ways he, he's spinning these things i could spin them a different way so i like, I don't think anyone should feel that necessarily pride nor shame for their family name in that way. Like, imagine you're like, I don't know, Joanne Hitler. What are you going to do then? Like, what if your name was Joanne Hitler? <laughs> you know, or Isaac Mussolini. What are you going to do then? You're going to go around being all ashamed all, all the time. <laughs> Every time you sign under... Can you, we only accept card at this point. I don't want to pay by card. I like paying by cash. No, we only accept card. All right, there's a the card. Joanne Hitler. <laughs> Not again. Sorry. <laughs> so, so they got that right. And also, it doesn't go back that far, does it? Whatever he said. They got that right. I mean, from 1600 onwards, is that how far your family goes back? It may well be not until the Middle Ages that surnames were first introduced. Mm. In a distinct and this is how they get away with it, is they're not really telling your family tree. They're just saying that for surnames didn't really... And they're, they're right. And this is where it goes generic, like I'm saying. So if you're buying this thing off the internet, what you're getting is this first line from Wikipedia about like your family name goes back to this place. And then the rest of it is, well, you know, now there are some little bits of information here, but really the rest of it is, well, you know, family names... They didn't really exist, so you know you were called like John the Baptist or like Eddie the Corker or something. If you like, or Eddie, Eddie the Vinyl, you'd call it Eddie the Vinyl, and then years later it'd be Eddie Vinylson, and and you know what I mean. It's not that, is it? Uh, that's not how Icelandic names and Viking names literally are. Like you know, I'm Ivor, so you're Ivor's son, and then it's like you know, but. Don't start me on that. I get it. Like, names just came up, didn't they? They just started. So, And the reason they started, wasn't it? Because people were going around the country, and so suddenly you've got a new John in town, and everyone knows old John, but who's new John? So I'm John of the Vinicum, of the place I've come from. So it's interesting that you found a family name, despite your family never going anywhere, <laughs> not having to need to get... Why didn't you... Why, why weren't you just the local people, and why did everyone else... Like when there was a new John in town, how come you, you had to say, I'm John of the Vinicum, of the local? Oh, everyone knows the other John. Who are you? I'm the local John. I've always been here. Are you? No, I'm John of the Vinicum. Uh, I don't know. Between people bearing the same person or Christian name. No, I can tell you about this. Yeah, you can tell if me about this because you've just read the plaque, you idiot. A furrier, you'd be called furrier. If you were a black oh i thought he was going to say something else then <laughs> if you were an archer you'd be called fletcher because hmm? it wasn't always about the uh it wasn't like archer was archer like, or you might be arrow maker sorry you might be called fletcher if you're a barrel maker you might be called um anyway people bearing the same person or christian name no, I can tell you about this. Yeah, what if you were a nonce? What would you be called then? If you were a furrier, you'd be called furrier. If you were a black... A black what? <laughs> Smith, you'd be called blacksmith. Are you a ba and baker, right? Baker. Baker man. Bakers. If you were a baker, you'd live at the baker's house. If you were... Um, what else is there in the world? <laughs> I don't know. If you're a blacksmith, you'd live at the blacksmith's house. If you're a crook, you'd live at the jail like you. What if you're a crook, Alan? Would you be called Alan Crook? <laughs> Anything is what you'd be called, right? Alan, Anonce. whatever you're doing. Not Alan, whatever you're doing. Alan singing my kids on Smule. In my case, I'd be Alan Superstar. Alan what? Did you hear that right? Is he loud enough for you? If you were... Um, 
What else is there in the world? <laughs> I don't know. Anything is what you record, right? Alan, whatever you're doing. In my case, I'd be Alan Superstar. Oh, I've been a, I'd have been a superstar at 1605 on, on the social media. Yeah. What? Hearsay, hearsay. Gather around. I want to tell you a story. Yeah. Hear ye, hear ye. <laughs> Not hearsay, hearsay. You bell end. <laughs> Alan, whatever you're doing. In my case, I'd be Alan Superstar. Oh, I've been a, I'd have been a superstar at 1605. I don't know about the superstar in 1605. On the social media. On the social media. Yeah. Hearsay, hearsay. Gather hearsay, hearsay. Gather round. Gather round. Yeah. Hear ye, hear ye. You think you would have been the town crier with that voice? You'd have been a low-life surf crook. And that's why you're still in the same little village with the family name doing little scams. <laughs> I want to tell you a story. Alan Storyteller. <laughs> Alan Storyteller. Alan Storyteller. Alan the fucking jester, mate. Okay, right. Anyway, I digress. So, um, uh, Alan Super. Alan Superstar. Jesus Christ, Superstar. Who are you? What are you sleeping in your car? Like you're going to be end up end up sleeping in your car, mate. You are after you lost the house through the court case. Alan Superstar. If Alan was alive today, no, if Alan, if we went back in time, this is what he said, basically, isn't it? If we went back in time to 1600, what would Alan's profession be? Well, he's got the surname Vinicum, so it's about where you live. So he never had a profession then or something. I don't know, but <laughs> we're assuming it would be something similar to today and therefore town crier or storyteller. But I would suggest con man, snake oil salesman, crook, sneak thief, Liar, Rob. Imagine all the things he'd get away with back in 1600. I don't think he'd have made it to, to this point in his life back in 1600, for sure. Look at his happy face. He loves it. He loves that plaque. He, he buys into this shit. Now, like I said, there's different reasons why you shouldn't buy into this shit. One is that they're there to make money out of you by buying the plaque. So they're going to put things on it that make you want to buy the plaque. <laughs> yeah? Right? And then number two is that it's meaningless drivel from ancient history that everybody's name eventually goes back to somewhere and it doesn't really mean directly anything to you today and your family line your dna and stuff and like what actually happened with the people isn't really charted by any of this like it, there's so much dis, um the, like by the time it gets down to you like the dissolve uh, the, the dilution of it all right um and like i've said like the adherence to the idea that you should feel proud of your family history and the people that did things before you okay proud for them and you know grateful for them but the idea that you are then to live on the benefits of that and be special because of it that's wrong that's stupid and if you're going to do that then you have to take all take all the guilt as well for all the bad things that were done so if like one of your ancestors turned out to be a crook, then you should also go to prison then, yeah? Like, no, like we don't have to feel those feelings for the people that lived before us. We now get to live our lives and do our best to create our legacies. And if you don't do that, if you're Alan, then you create this horrible legacy of lies and hate and spit and vitriol and end up with nothing and no friends and in this horrible position. And I hope, Alan, you are going to, this is the only way you're going to get on my show is if you do more 10 minute segments at the start. Because to be fair, this is the only bit that is tolerable to watch because your true crime stuff is rank rubbish. The growth in documentation necessitated by the expanding administration. And... Now, he said it wasn't a dyslexia problem, but I think this might be a dyslexia problem. I don't think they're writing in Old English. I think, well, you could call it dyslexia if you had a, I don't know, diagnosis. But for Alan, it's a, it's a problem, whatever it is. I want to tell you a story. Alan Storyteller. <laughs> okay, right. anyway, I digress. So, um, uh, with the growth in documentation necessitated by the expanding administrators in the middle, middle of Canada, eager to replenish their exchequers by in, in inventing a tax collection system. That is when surnames become essential, right? You so that bit about tax and the reason we need surnames is just jargon, like not jargon, sorry, it's just filler to fill out the certificate with nothing. That's why we need to, and now he's just learned it because he hasn't really read that far into the certificate before. Because of tax purposes, you now need a surname. <gasps> Look at his face. 
He tells me that I warp his face. That's his real face on the picture. I didn't make his face look like that. Look, that's his real face there. Look at him. They collect tax. You've got to go, Alan Minico, we want some money, right? It's a bit like those people coming on the boats now. They don't have a passport or a name. You don't owe us anything. Come in. You're welcome. You don't owe us anything. Alan Minico. He's managed to turn it into racism. You're £19,000 in 1975. You're bankrupt. Sorry, what? We want some money, right? It's a bit like those people coming on the boats now. They don't have a passport or a name. You don't owe us anything. Come in. You're welcome. You don't owe us anything. Alan Minico. You're £19,000 in 1975. You're bankrupt. Alan Vinicum, you owe £18,000 in 1975. You're bankrupt. What? Did you owe £18,000 in 1975 and go bankrupt? Or did you owe £18,000 to the tax people more recently and go bankrupt? What do you mean about going bankrupt? <laughs> why the £18,000 figure and why so cross about paying tax? That's how you got your surname is because tax got instituted and now they needed surnames. You like it. You've got it on your certificate. Right. So like that. Uh, um, yeah. So yeah, that's they've done this to get a tax system. You only got surnames because of the tax man. <laughs> Ironical, isn't it? Eh? It's not true, but yeah. <laughs> In some parts of the world, that would have been the, the case, but other parts of the world, surnames would have developed differently. Yeah. Um, those surnames became generally fall into four categories. These of um, Incal, which is just a, a graphical thing. I don't know what he's talking about. I can't see the words he's trying to read. Uh, Patromatic, occupational, or nickname. Oh, yeah. Nickname. Whitey. I'm sorry, what? These of um, Incal, which is just a, a graphical thing. Uh, Patromatic, occupational, or nickname. Oh, yeah. Nickname. Whitey. Chalky white, right? So Chalky white? Whitey? Did you grow up as the only <laughs> only white British man in Jamaica or something? Like, do you grow up a bunch... Why were you nicknamed... Who was nicknamed Chalky white? Who's whitey? Why is that... And that's not even your surname. Oh, someone's called Chalky white. And their surname is Mr. White. And that's why they're, you think they're called white, whitey was their... I'm, I'm really confused as to where the brain works. You'd have a nickname that'd be your surname, or you'd have an occupation that'd be your surname. Yeah, or one of those other two categories that you couldn't read properly. You have this, like, I can't pronounce it. Top of panic. Top of panic? I don't know what it's supposed to be. It's a way of writing. It's a way of writing. Um. <laughs> it's a way of being with Alan. Right, so there we go, as I mentioned above. It's a way of living. So... The name is Cotrapanic. Cotrapanic. It doesn't even exist. I don't know what he's trying to say. Cotrapanic. No, it just doesn't exist. 404, no one's ever searched for that on Google before. <laughs> when a man moves from one place to another, he often described his birthplace... This is what I don't understand, is how come you're called Vinicum on this principle? If you're moving somewhere, you needed to take your family name with you. So you were the people from this place, Withicum, or like the, the village of Withicum, yeah? So then you go somewhere else and you're like, Alan Vinicum's family, yeah? But like, if you don't go there, you're just the local people. So when the people come in, they were the ones that have the different surname and you are just like Alan local man or alan freeman or something you know like it's less likely you would be called so but you're saying you stayed in the same place forever and you stuck with the name but it could all be facts couldn't it i'll tell you what i really love is the fact that he thinks it was him like his fantasy delusion world the way he says it he's like i was there in 1603 and like the way his brain works is so fucking messed up such it became his name yeah yeah yeah, yeah. binky he's adopted He's adopted. I'm going to play this clip because it makes me smile. He's adopted. When Kobo found out she was adopted. 
No, Don't it's be a good. Cheater. Uh, good. Don't don't cheat on mommy Kiwawa. What? What? No, it's not that kind of it's not that kind of thing. Uh, you are it's a half uh you're a half child. I'm a half child. What do you mean? Yeah, so so Kiara is married to Amelia. But I'm married to myself. So you're half, we're not related. I mean, w me and Kiara are not, this is getting complicated. I'm, you're adopted. I'm sorry, you had to find out this way, but you're adopted. I'm adopted! Yes, but we love you, we both love you very much. I'm adopted! Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry, I just, no, don't be sad, don't be sad. We chose, we chose you. We chose you, just, just separately. Oh, please don't cry. Please don't cry. We chose you, just, we chose you separately. I'm adopted! <laughs> adopted. <laughs> no, Kobo, I lied. You loved. So there you go. <laughs> At least I got something to make me smile. Yeah, I get that. So Alan Vinicum <laughs> moved, yeah? Alan Kiddicum moved. No, he didn't. That wasn't you. You didn't live there. You live today in 2024. Other people lived in 1600 that had the same family name. Your great, 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 great grandfather. And you don't know what his name is because you haven't done the research into your family tree. From Uncle Tom Cobley, Whittacombe. So you're making this up now like a story. Alan the Storyteller. Alan Smith grew from Whittacombe to Exeter. Alan Smith moved from Widdicombe to Exeter. No, he didn't. That would have been Alan the Blacksmith moving. You're talking... <laughs> You're getting confused now. It's pronounced Widdicombe, and they said, you're in Widdicombe. So, yeah, Widdicombe. What? The people up the road didn't know the name of the local village next door. Widdicombe. Alan Smith moved from Widdicombe to Exeter pronounced Willicum and they said your name Vinicum so yeah Vinicum he said yeah Vinicum not knowing how to pronounce his own village and the people in the next neighboring town Exeter would have said but it's Vinic it's Withicum we know it's Withicum because we've been down there on our horses earlier it's it's Withicum <laughs> what are you saying you're the village idiot I thought you said Widicum. no Vinicum so that's probably I probably was in Widicum and I put a B on it. Oh, my ancestors were all dyslexic, right? So <laughs> you think? Wait, wait, wait! You think that the reason your your name's got a B in it is because your ancestors were dyslexic and couldn't spell with it? <laughs> you think? That what's probably quite likely is one of your ancestors went to the neighbouring town and was so dyslexic they couldn't spell the neighbour the name of their village. So they put a B. It was dyslexia that did that. Not understanding that back then spelling was like you know have you seen William Shakespeare spelled his name various different ways? Yeah, like spelling was a bit more fluid back then. You think it was down to dyslexia though, and that <laughs> but they themselves they were the ones that got it wrong about their own like <laughs> and it stuck. It just stuck. That one mistake in 1600 just stuck. <laughs> and that's how it happened. That's how I think I've got... Well, get, I think I'll get... And you don't... But the difference between what I described and what he's described is I thought it was his ancestor. He doesn't. He thinks it was him in some sort of time travel situation. He thinks it's him. Willicum to Exeter was such... It became his name. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I get that. The name is Coxapanic. When a man moves from one place to another, he often describes... This is the detective on the case. I his birthplace. And God help us if Alan would just come over to the dark side, you know, to the light side. I've got Jesus. To the light side, thank you. Um, then, uh, Alan, we could do uh, Who Do You Think You Are? That would be brilliant. I could produce it. We could film it. We could take you to the, you know, follow your family tree and do the who do you think you are on it. And we could just show you the things and you could react to them. Who do you think you are? That'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? Like the BBC show. We couldn't present it on YouTube because you're banned, but we'll find a way.
with such come and talk to me alan come and talk to me i've got money so that i can pay you for being on content huh it became his name it became his name yeah 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 i get that so alan Vinicum <laughs> moved yeah from uncle tom cobbley Willicum. alan smith moved from Willicum to exeter pronounced Willicum and they said you're in Vinicum so yeah Vinicum I thought you said Winnicum. No, Winnicum. So that's probably... I probably was in Winnicum. And I put a B on it. I hope my ancestors... I probably was in Winnicum. And I put a B on it. It's all dyslexic, right? <laughs> so that's how I think I've got... Well, I'm get, I think I'm getting there. I think I'm getting there now. I think I'm cottoning on. <laughs> One of the earliest references... <laughs> on record... Is a quiz name... Of one Christopher Vinicum. Earliest record name on record is a christening of a Christopher Vinicum. This might be true. Uh, again, the they probably the website will probably just get all their information from the census and then just print it on a load of plaques and just sell them, won't they? Like you know, back then when they started doing this in the late nineties, the information was probably like, you know, less easy to find on the internet, but they probably just had the census and went through it and right. Like, so you're gonna get some basic information, yeah? In the church of North Petherton, Somerset. Petherton. So why weren't they called the Pethertons then? 1575. So the earliest man called Vinicum on this earth it was called Christopher. No. The first christened Vinicum. 1575 my name started. Well, as far as records go. 1575. How do you like that, Trolls? I'm see, you see, I told you. How do you like that, trolls? He's serving me. His name goes back to 1575. He's serving me, the trolls. He's special. Alan's special because his name goes back a long way. And there's different ways to spin it. And if I, I could start doing all the thing, I could start doing the same thing. I could. I've got better references for my actual, like, fa factual family tree and like what they did. Like, I've got better references than just it went back a long way. Do you want to play top trumps with it? Do you want to play a quick top trumps, Alan? A quick top trumps. Quick top trumps. Isaiah Jessup was a noted canal engineer and second son of William Jessup. So let's go up to his dad. William Jessup was a civil engineer, best known for his work on canals, harbours and early railways in the late 18th and 19th century. In Devon, look, Devon, Devonport, Devon, Plymouth. Now I'm same thing. I haven't got some big family estate because of this. The family line goes on and then it goes on different directions. So I don't have some big family estate because of this. But like if you want to go direct back great direct this is my great great great, you know, one of my great great great. Um son of Isaiah Jessup, a former shipwright in the naval dockyard, responsible for the repair and maintenance of Rudyard's Tower, the Ediston the Ediston Lighthouse. Look, Ediston Light I don't know where that is. Uh it burned down. John Smearton a leading civil engineer drew up, drew up some plans, and then William Jessup became John Smearton's like uh, pupil, basically. And Smearton acted as his guardian and took him on. So everyone knows Smearton. He's quite famous. He's quite famous, isn't he, Smearton? Like, there's a portrait of my great great ancestor in the um, in the Irish Portrait Gallery, I think, and I think there might be one in the British Portrait Gallery as well. In in the you know. Uh, they built all these canals, the Grand Junction Canal, the West India Docks, you've heard of them, the West India Docks. They built the dry docks in Bristol. Um, and their children went on to do big things as well. Um, so there's a little top trumps with you, Alan. There's a little top trumps. There's just one of them. There's just William Jessup. We can do another top trumps another time. It doesn't go back. I mean, that's not as far back. I can obviously go far because obviously this guy and like this direct line and all this that can go further back but just for a notable one there's a notable one alan you live in the same place you get to see that lighthouse all the time they have it up in uh Plym somewhere else now up as a, a memorial um he was the there's a there's a there's like a memorial for this guy in newark i think or his dad or one of them because he was the mayor of newark at one point uh you'll you'll know Alan will know the Bristol Dry Dock. <laughs> he, 
He'll have heard of the West India Docks. He'd have possibly been on the railways. This is it, later life, lived in Newark. And uh, his son, Isaias, became a successful engineer in his own right as well. It's just an interesting bit, isn't it, Alan? Oh, that'll make you cross, Alan, won't it? Dig out your actual family tree, Alan. Dig out someone who's actually done something and show us that on the next one. It's 1575. It's a bit of a weird, we're playing top trumps with family hit tree now. I didn't do any of that stuff. That was them that did that. I don't live off the, the benefit of the legacy. They didn't leave me a load of money. So. <laughs> they had children and their children had children. And then one of their children went to India, of, of all places, and had a tea plantation. And then they had some kids in a family in India. And then they those kids grew up... Uh, actually talking of orphans and adopted they went back one of them went back to the uk and carried on like another family line and then like the ones that were adopted in the orphanage in india they grew up with the jessup name quite proud of thank you very much um and then they came back over to england as you could call it immigrants couldn't you but they're i don't know what you call it like uh british people who are catholics but might have been seen in a different light and there's all sorts of stories you can tell it's interesting but uh again whilst i love and sort of I have a real, like my dad's interested in it, my family are interested in it, you know, a real interest and passion in it. I'm not going to take on as a pride of my own national personal pride, or not national, sorry, my own personal pride, the actions of people from the history. I'm proud of what they did for them, but I, it's not me that did it. So I can't say, yeah, look at that, trolls, in your face, trolls. My great grandfather was a great man. Like, he doesn't, I'm not a great man because of that. I have to live out that legacy. I have to take on the responsibility of their family history, their name, and try and do the best for my life to live like you know to start uh to live up to that to, to to um you know to be to do my best that's the word to do my best uh whereas alan thinks because they did something good in the past and there's no record of anyone doing anything good <laughs> for all we know they might have been crooks and robbers but there's like alan's saying because they existed in the past he's a special person with special rights fuck you trolls which is weird isn't it it's weird. I have the same nose, do I? Yeah. Um, certainly the Indian connection means I've got a bit of difference in me that um, like depends on, you know, family lines divide, don't they? So um, at no point can you say now with all the different Jessops that are out there that mine is the main one or theirs is the main one. But you could have a more direct line maybe in some ways to the, the greater Jessops. I mean, some of them were in the wars. Like we have a, a family, a family, uh, I don't know if this is a fact, but we have a family story that one of them was the aide de Compton Nelson. But I don't know if they were the aide de Compton Nelson. We have an argument in the family about that because, you know, trying to take things back in the history and get it right. But there was a Jessup in the Battle of Waterloo. Like, you know, I don't know. Like, anyway, I've said enough on that. It's rolled ever since. Who talked longer on their Scott? Who talked longer about their history? Scott or Alan? Yeah. <laughs> Who talked longer on their history? Scott or Alan? One for Scott, two for Alan. I just, I know more about it. I know more about it. I could sit here and do you a three hour, four hour thing about my family history. My dad could join me and we could have a really good short talk. It's really interesting stuff. I didn't do any of it. I'm not responsible for any of it. I I love it. You know, I understand his his sense of pride, but uh, I'm not going to dr drive that point home over and over again. It's just, it is what it is, isn't it? Oh, me and my ancestors. Who's the guy with the tash? That's Colonel, Colonel Charles Thorpe Jessup. He's more recent. Um, I'll show you him as well. Um, Colonel Charles Thorpe Jessup where's he Charles Thorpe uh, Imperial War Museum Assam Valley Light Horse he's the one from the Assam Valley Light Horse isn't it I mean I've got my dad's got all this stuff do you know what I mean um, it's taking a bit of a while to load up now for some reason thank you try again I don't know why it's not loading up. Lieutenant Colonel Charles Thorpe Jessup, honorary aide de camp to the Lieutenant Governor of Eastern Bengal and Assam. That's him. He was knighted in the 1909 New Year Honours. Knighted, I think. It was, it was in the New Year's Honours in 1909. It's more recent, so I'm not doing top trumps with more recent because Alan was trying to go back history. Uh, he was given the um, the Order of the Star of India and the Order of the Indian Empire. It's actually, it's making me feel a little bit emotional, to be honest. I do feel really proud about this. I do. And I feel proud of him for what he did. I feel like, like you know, being appointed to the king, honours and stuff, for services and good works to the British Empire. Like, I do feel proud of that, I suppose. Yeah. 
but like you know, I don't do YouTube shows about it, do I? Anyway, let's move on. Credit, uh, my dad's done an ancestral DNA. Yeah, I'm like fifteen percent Northern Indian. <laughs> On December the nineteenth. I mean, that based on what my dad is, and assuming what my mom is, I'll do the DNA on, on stream if you want. We'll do that as a fun stream if you want. I don't mind. Sixteen thirty-seven. I want to say I'm proud as well. The reason I recognise their faces, and there was—I haven't got a picture of him to bring up there quickly, but we'll do it another stream. Uh, the reason I recognise their faces is because they were photographed with their war uniforms on, like with their service uniforms on, because they, you know for whatever good or bad at the time, whether you believe in and hate the empire or whatever, like they served their country. They weren't just like people who did this and that. Like some, like the people who built the canals and stuff, I suppose they were doing it as private enterprise, but it did serve the country as well to build the canals and the, the dry docks and all that. Like, and the people who were in the wars and in the, you know, they've got the war records. And like also my mother's line, like I'm equally, and if not more proud in some ways, well, yeah, of, I don't to start me because it's gonna make me emotional, but, um, like my granddad fought in the Second World War, so and that was on my mother's side. And um, my nan lost nine brothers in the war, so I never even met them. I never met them, but you know they gave up their lives so that I could be sitting here doing this. So um, don't start me because I'll get emotional. I get properly emotional now. I'm starting to feel emotional, and we're supposed to be just having a laugh at this idiot son. Binnicum, son of Richard and Jane Binnicum. How did you find out so much detail? Because my parents, or my dad, and the you know that side of the family are committed and interested in that sort of thing, and they care. So they found it all out, and I just learn off them. So I'm very grateful to them. I really should get my dad on stream to do a big thing about it. Um, it'll be a weird stream, and obviously some of Alan's people have already literally. Like, bear in mind, I don't know if you all know this, but some of people on either Alan or some other trolls actually trolled my dad. They got his phone number off the internet and trolled my dad. So that's not very nice. We don't talk about it a lot, but they're not very nice people. Some of these people from that side of the fence, like. We never, we never trolled Alan's dad. Present in Alpington, Devonshire, in 1636. And there's my family. Alpington is a district of Exeter where I was born. So I'm getting close to my relative now. My relatives are now in Exeter in 1638. In 1665, Edward Vinicum, son of Stephen Vinicum, was christened Willicum on the moor. So they've got the census records, but you don't know that that's your direct family line. Like that could be the cousin of the cousin of the cousin of your family line. Do you know? Like have with the same name. Like going direct about like the father of the father of the father of the father as your family line, and this is just your family name. So. <laughs> wow, I've got shivers now. Willicum, Willicum. So by. Like those people I, I was talking about that I showed you, they're my direct ancestors. At that date, I was being associated with Withercombe. I always had this thing about Withercombe. You are not... <laughs> that's not you. <laughs> you just have the family name. <laughs> You've always had this thing about Withercombe. Uncle Tom Cobley and Withercombe. Uncle Tom Cobley and Withercombe. I, I can't get it out of my head. I can't get it. Withercombe. Who's Uncle Tom Cobley? You can't get it out of your head. <laughs> I'm going to have to find out who is Uncle Tom. Oh, well, I want to do it with Google, don't I? Let's do a Google. Google, who is Uncle Tom Cobb? Oh, it's a real thing, Uncle Tom Cobbley. A Devon folk song, Widdicombe Fair. Okay. We'll have that. Tom Pierce, Tom Pierce, Len. Thank you very much, Alan Rossevier uploading this common version of a Devon classic. Please don't copyright strike me when I play it on my stream. We need to know. Tom Pierce, Tom Pierce, lend me a grey mare. All along, down along, out along Lee. For I want to go to Whittacombe Fair. With Bill Brewer, Jan Stewart, Peter Gurney, Peter Davy, Donald Widdham, Harry Ork, Old Uncle Tom Cobbley and all, old Uncle Tom Cobbley and all. Well, when shall I see again my old grey mare? All along, down along, out along Lee. Oh, Friday noon or Oosh. Saturday soon. Right, that's enough. Um, get my dad talking about his resources. You mean resources for finding family trees? Yeah, like people have left record, like 
the family that came over from India were quite like like they cared about that stuff and they kept as much like and told the stories and kept the records and like passed it down and stuff so that's the resources really my great uncle John um, and people like that I mean I'll be, I'll be a bit careful about coming on the internet and talking about my close family records because then it opens up this whole world of people trolling my wider family and stuff which is a bit weird isn't it but um, you know sad because of what happened with Alan like, and Alan's people and other people like him and his friends that they can't I can't behave like reasonable people. Come Vinicum, and there I was. That wasn't you, Alan. By that date? In that song as well, that wasn't you. <laughs> I was being associated with Withicum. I always had this thing about Withicum, Uncle Tom Cobbley and Withicum and Vinicum. I, I can't By that day, about... by 1600, you were associated, but you weren't, what are you on about? Ed, I can't get it. Withicum, I can't Vinicum. get it out of my head. AD, 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 Widdicombe, Widdicombe. Sorry, by AD, 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 AD. I was being associated with Withicum. I always had this thing about Withicum, Uncle Tom Cobbley and Withicum and Vinicum. I, I can't get it out of my head. I can't get it. Withicum, Vinicum. And there I was. In, in, in Withicum on the moor. That wasn't you. Wow. The marriage of Agnes Vinicum and Stephen Bell. Like, there's no even guarantee that this is your direct ancestor. It could even be like the cousin of your cousin's second cousin's cousin's cousin. In Chalverton, Devonshire, in November Chalverton. So we're going to move over Chalverton. You haven't felt a, a long-lasting ancestral connection with Chalverton. So we're just going to ignore that one. Christiana Vinica married William Stangster in the Church of St. Mary's of the Virgin in Kent in 1837. Now, they're nothing to do with me. The arms... In Kent, they're not, it's nothing to do with me. Why? Because it's in Kent, obviously. I live in fucking Devon. So what? Because you live in Devon now, the people that were born in Kent or got christened in Kent are nothing to do with you. Uh, described below were granted by the family surname Vinicum. My blazon of arms is a make a mark there in the bridge of three arches. Now this I don't know about because do like this is where I come to question does every family get a family crest like you know obviously you need one to be able to sell them for ten dollars a pop but like does everyone actually really really get a family crest like this like if you're just some common surf do you end up with a family crest I don't remember us like in our family tree and all that doing our research thinking about having a family crest like this I just don't know if it came up I would have thought it would only apply to certain like, so like maybe that's the town of Withicum has a family. I don't, I don't know. Like anyway, Alan is pretty certain this is truth. It's historical fact. It might be, it might not. In the Argent, in the centre of Hurrah. Translation: Blue, sublines bars, and the truth and loyalty. The Graham's head. Drew. He said blue sublines bars of truth. I think blue. What does he mean? It means it represents. It, they're basically, they're describing this coat of arms and what it represents, but he's doing a very bad job of telling us. And a stable bankery. And there's there's the coat of arms of Alan Vinicum. It's, it's Esquire. Not, listen, it's not the coat of arms of Alan Vinicum Esquire. <laughs> There it all is, anyway, if you can read that. I mean, it's not the coat of arms of Alan Vinicum Esquire. It's a historical coat of arms that represents in some way... I mean, it's different from the one I found on the internet for a start. So they can't all be right, can they? Like, I think they want you to buy this certificate so they will put a bit of stuff on it that's reasonable and then just ship them out with certificates from the government on them. And someone has bought it and you've ended up with it. And it's someone in your family because it's got your chuffy name. This is what, do you remember he said this is written in Old English as well? It's not even written in Old English. The font there has a bit of, bit of pizzazz. But in this, the font down here is not that difficult to read. It, it's not written in Old English. Oh, Alan. Whoa! 
What the hell am I talking about? Oh, there you go. That's the origins. Uh, Did I miss the bit where he put it in his mouth? I'm at 9.29. Hang on. He put it in his... Yes, I missed the bit where he put it in his mouth. Hang on. Look at this. Whitey. Chalky White, right? We were, we, were, we were listening to him talking about Chalky White. What about this? So, look. you'd have a nickname that would be... Look, sick. that's come up and it's gone into... A, he hasn't gone into his mouth, but he can't... Everything he has on screen, anything he has, he has to nearly... It, he wants it in his mouth. It's, it's come up like that onto... Look, what's wrong with the man? Why has he touched it against his chin? Okay. Or you'd have an occupation. What's wrong with the man? And next, I've got to say thank you to Picky Blinders for giving us the amazing Irish Birmingham guy, Dylan Murphy, who... Sorry? Uh, um, yeah. And next... I've got to say thank you to Picky Blinders for giving us the amazing Irish Birmingham guy. I go to the Blues, the football. They wear the Picky Blinders caps up the Blues. It's our area. It's Small Heath. My family, my mother's side, County Cork. I've got all these connections with it. It's funny to hear Alan loving it and sucking it. Sucking it. Sucking it. Go and enjoy your Chelsea. I thought you were, wait, haven't you got some special connection with Chelsea up in London? No? Why are you a supporter of Chelsea then, Mr. Exeter, Mr. Widdicombe? Why are you so special and connected and historical? You support Chelsea. <laughs> and you love the Peaky Blinders up in Birmingham. You wish, you wish, you wish you could be like the Peaky Blinders. Suck it. Murphy, who won the What's his name? Um, yeah. And next, I've got to say thank you to Picky Blinders for giving us the amazing Irish Birmingham guy, Dirian Murphy, who Dur won the Oscar. Dirian Murphy. Um, for Nolan's film, didn't it? I've got to say thank you to Picky Blinders for giving us the amazing Irish Birmingham guy, Dirian Murphy, Dirian who won Mur the Oscar. Um, for Nolan's film, didn't it? Last night. So, in honor of that, I just have a quick go at Piggy Blinders. What are you all doing? I won the Oscar. <laughs> By orders of the Piggy Blinder, Hollywood gave me an Oscar. About letting off an atomic bomb. <laughs> well, well, done. <laughs> well done. Hollywood gave me an Oscar about letting off an atomic bomb. I do think it was said in chat earlier. Maybe this is in agreement with me. I think Alan, you do have to do this. You do have to do this. You have to put a bit of Alan into it. You can't do the dry episodes about fucking boring true crime and claim that it was all you in the past. And like, it's just sad and boring. You, this is better than anything else. Talking about current affairs and having a bit of a, you know, personality, isn't it? If you can't do that, you can't be on YouTube. Well, you can't be on YouTube, can you? You can't be on YouTube anyway, can you, Alan? You know what shouldn't be on YouTube. But <laughs> big up Snikey Airfax. I can't believe I let that one go past. Imagine if Alan made a vlog saying, "Mr. Battery Exhausted, I've got something to shut you up, but my zip is stuck." <laughs> um, Alan knows. I think he agrees with me. I think we all agree. We'd like to see some personality in our content. We can't just deliver the dry facts. Like it can't all be boring all the time. Like this is actually better. I'm enjoying it more. He's enjoying it more. He's got a smile. No, let's see more, Alan. Let's see more. Let's do this more. 15 minutes of himself before the true crime. Well, only in this episode. The others were so bad I couldn't even countenance watching them. I don't know why he doesn't do an hour of it. I don't know why he doesn't do an hour of this as like a show. An hour of Alan's, like, you know, personality. Like, he'd draw more people and have more friends and, you know, build more community. What he said about... Listen, this is a true fact, and Alan will not be watching now because he's talking about him, but he's not supposed to be, and it's not directed to make him feel alarm and distress. Um, fair comment on YouTube. But the thing is, right, he would say it was back then, it was better, and this and that. Back then, he allowed himself to be himself a lot more. And now he is so scared of trolls that what he will do is just stick to the script. And he allowed the people... Like, I don't know why how he let this happen. Alan, if, you know, if he were to hear this would agree. I don't know how he would let this happen, but the 
the spanners now have ruled what Alan does and doesn't and the way he behaves in a way. Like he let them tell him don't make jokes about this. He let them tell him don't say this and that and stick to the script and we prefer this and that. And Alan is supposed to be running his own streams. So I don't know how that happened, but he's turned into a shell of himself. My favourite one recently was when he talked about his holidays. I thought that was brilliant. But obviously for different reasons than everyone else. But like, if he wants to do it, like it is true on the internet, you'll have what's called churn. Churn means that some people are going to start watching you on the first day your stream comes out and then they're going to stop watching and then new people are going to start and then they're going to stop watching and then new people and you've got to have new people coming in at a higher rate than the old people leave to grow but it doesn't mean that some people are there forever like it means that it's churn it like there's new and there's old and there's like people have tastes and they change and stuff so um for alan there's a lot of people that might even see him for the first time new he's hoping for that on tiktok and stuff like that he's lost a lot of people along the way but there's still this churn factor and the reason Alan doesn't grow is because he can't keep anyone there. No one's interested to stay. And the reason, one of the big reasons, like I said, is he has removed all personality from his content. Now, even this was a tiny little bit of chit-chat inspired by something he had to stick on the wall instead of the Hitler picture. But he's lost all sense of personality with his content and he he's scared to inject it. I'm Christopher Nolan, my favourite producer. Oppenheimer. Right, now then. What are you talking about? What about the show? I didn't dox myself. <laughs> Everyone knows I was born in Exeter. Right. <laughs> you did dox yourself when you published your address on your Patreon. Madeline McCann. Madeline McCann. We'll get onto that in a minute. So we won't. We're not going to watch the Madeline McCann stuff. But I agree with it. I think this was much better that first 10 minutes. Do that more. Do an hour of it. You'd have a much. Do one hour of that every. Like, not every episode. I mean, every week. Do Alan's hour of, like, you know, stuff. And move away from all that fucking horrible child murder all the time. And you might be able to, like, keep a person watching. Like, you know, might be able to. I'm not. I don't know why I'm giving him tips, but you know what I mean? Like, social media and the content and all that it involves a sense of personality and that was the only time Alan showed any aspect of personality throughout the entire week so that's what I've covered and I enjoyed if he wants to be on the show he can't come on and be on my show I can react to him but we can come on Twitter and I can pay him money to OBS I had a disconnect reconnection successful I think we're fine. So you can come on the show. I can give him money to come on the stream on Twitter, on Twitch. And we can have a bit of fun if he wants to do fun like this. Don't know why he's such a moody chuffer. You've all enjoyed that, right? You've all enjoyed that, you chuffers. This is what you came for. You've all enjoyed that. I've got more for you tonight. I've got an evangelical man in the rain. <laughs> and it's just fun because I'll do his voice for a bit. I've also got some cooking that you would not believe some eating that you would not countenance. And we can always go back to find out what Luke was doing in room 101. <laughs> Wouldn't like to be locked in there with him. So let, without further ado, let us continue. This man lived in Jericho. He wait, was wait, wait, wait. Start from the start. I need to hear the whole thing. And let me give you a precursor of this. One of the things I love about this, one of the things, the main thing that I love about this, right, is that the dude is out in the rain and he's on a little step. So there are things I like. Rain or shine, he's doing this. He's in Birmingham. He's at my way. He's at my local ends. Yeah? He's at our local ends. And he's got the West Midlands accent. So I'll be doing my enjoyable thing of doing his voice. Are you ready? Let us go. Let us now go. He's got a cross. He's got a crucifix. His name is Andy Wicks with the crucifix. Yeah. Great to be out today. Great to be out today. <laughs> to share a message. The message. The Lord Jesus. Via a man called Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus. This man lived in Jericho. He was a tax collector. Collector. A very wealthy man. A very wealthy man. Jesus was passing through. Look, people are passing through. No one gives a shit. <laughs> Jericho. And as he went through, 
This man, Zacchaeus, he was a short man. He was a short man. I don't really, is that relevant? He was a wealthy man. A wealthy man. And he was an unpopular man. And unpopular. This is like Alan, isn't it? It's like Alan. Because Alan's, well, he's not wealthy. He's definitely unpopular. Alan's definitely unpopular. He was also a clever man. A clever man, not like Alan. And he was also energetic. Energetic. What kind of person are you? What kind of person are you? I'm not on a fucking step in the street. You like that? But I do think it's okay to love Jesus. So I'm not anti-Jesus. It's quite interesting to pe preach it in the street like this. It's fine. If I was going shopping, I would rather not go into Dulce's again. I'd rather stand and watch this guy talking about Jesus in the street with his big crucifix. Andy Wicks and his crucifix. I hope he'd be all right with me sat in the audience going, Amen, brother! We <laughs> did direct opposite. Is it Corporation Street? I couldn't quite place it because of this shopping billboard thing. Like, when, you know, when they do work and they've got the billboards up. And like there's a crane in the background. I can't quite place it off the top of my head. But I know like if I was walking around Birmingham, I'd be able to find my way around. So I know where it is. Like he's in the centre of Birmingham, isn't he? But I wondered if it was um, her street. Poor, lazy and tall. Where have I got that from Bristol? Poor. Doesn't really matter. What matters is this. It doesn't really matter if you're tall or not. Achilles, when he heard that Jesus was passing by, he went out to take a look at him. He went out and he had a look. Now listen, you can't critique me because I'm here having a look. I'm doing exactly that. I'm like Zacchaeus. I might not be wealthy. I might not be tall or short. I'm just in the middle, I suppose. But uh, I am definitely out to have a look. And I think that's good, is it? He had... He was inquisitive. <clears throat> inquisitive. He had an interest. An interest. I've got an interest. I'm interested in why you've got this little step. Do you also do DIY? Is it safe? Like Moses. 1,500 years before. Like Moses. God came to Moses in a burning bush. In a burning bush. Don't start to confuse. Stick, stick with the original story. It was a test. A test. Did Moses have, as an old man, did he still have an interest in life or had he given up? Had he given up? I love the fact that everybody that walks past simply ignores him. Said it again. Jesus said to a crippled man. A crippled man. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> and also, I, love, I would love it if the camera would just pan around so that we could see if there was anyone else watching. But I get the feeling it's just us. But, uh, said it again. Jesus said to a crippled man. A crippled man. At a spa. At a spa. Leamington Spa. He said, you want to get well? This man had been sick 38 years. Bad sick. It's not a silly question. It's not a silly question. If you've been sick for 38 years, do you want to get well? He might not have wanted to. It's not a silly question. Andy Wicks and his crucifix. When you've lived in certain types of circumstances for so long, the idea of being free and living a normal life it's not cut and dry he went quiet at the end there it's not dry here because it's raining and you're getting wet can you get to the point about uh, Zacchaeus because that was the bit at the start of the story Zacchaeus Zacchaeus heard about this man Jesus he's heard about this man Jesus he was inquisitive inquisitive we've heard that bit maybe there was more to it maybe in his little mansion. In his little mansion. Maybe like some of you. I can't help pausing it at every word and doing this. I love it though. Behind the facade. Facade. The and the good job. Maybe he was deeply unhappy. Maybe. Many. Maybe he supported West Brom. In society today are. Many people in society today do. And many of them are deeply unhappy. In days gone by... In days gone by, it could have been worse. He could have supported the villa. <laughs> people have balanced it by taking pride in their nation. 
course, today. We can't do that. England has fallen, fallen apart. The takeover and destruction by the far left and Islam in their unholy alliance has destroyed and is destroying this country. Oh my God. Calm it down. Islam. <laughs> now listen, a few of you in chat will know that before I did Nutter Watch today, I went on Twitch and I said, I haven't got enough nutters to fill the time. I have got enough nutters to fill the time. I've, I've filled the time easy. We, we could finish now if you want, but I've still got King Cobra's cooking to show you a bit of that. I'd love to show you some of that. Um, this, I said, this guy's new to me. I haven't watched a lot of his videos. I think he just preaches in the street. And I think the joke is that he's on a, sta a step and he's got a big crucifix and he's doing the preaching. And there's nothing wrong with Jesus and preaching, but his style is a little bit funny. And because he's from the West Midlands and I'm from the West Midlands, I will imitate his voice and I'll say, like I just did, you know, they could be supporting the villa. No, that's a joke that is just fine, yeah? But I didn't realise, nobody in chat, like, you know, you chuffers know that I didn't know. I didn't know he was going to go on about the Islams. <laughs> Religious warfare in the street well he's got his that bit of wood this is birmingham multicultural birmingham don't stand up on a step and have a pop at the islams on broad street <laughs> sorry <laughs> what's this really me laughing in my shock and fear like what is happening now oh my god the missing years of Jesus. Big ups, Candice. Yeah. Um, well, if you do like Islam, or some people don't, um, but some people do and some people don't, like, the more of Jesus' story is told in the Quran. Like, it's, like if people love Jesus, I, I'm surprised by this because I'm a bit open-minded, of course, aren't I? I'll go to a church. I'll go to a mosque. I'm not going to fucking go to those stinking Buddhist places, though. <laughs> not hanging out with the Buddhists. No, no, but I'm, I'm open-minded and, like, you know... I think it's worth reading these things and you know thinking about them. Maybe I'm not going to tell you what to think or anything like that. I'm quite happy to be like you know living in the in the light, so to speak. But I don't have to like you know read the Bible and like you know have a tattoo of Jesus on my back or anything. I can just do good things in my life and be a good chuffer, and I think I'm all right. I've got my own little deal with God, which is that as long as I'm a good boy, things will be all right. Yeah. Um, so, but it is interesting, isn't it, that the missing years of Jesus are actually recorded in other texts in other places as well, yeah? Jesus did other things that, miracles as well, that people in, that like the Bible might be like, well, he, that was good that he did that, I like that. Some other things that might have been a bit more difficult for them to countenance, maybe, apparently, in some of these texts. But yeah, that's an interesting story. Let's go back to, now we're having a religious war with the, I, I can't believe this has happened. <coughs> the establishment I want to eat some cowards. Doritos have betrayed our Christian heritage in England. I didn't realise we betrayed the Christian heritage in England. Oh no. <laughs> and the result is devastation. Remember. <laughs> made this world with principles built into it. Wait, was that muted? I said, I'll let him play a little bit more and I'll try and eat some Doritos. And I, I can't keep pausing it, but I paused it to tell you I can't keep pausing it. Devastation! And what you sow, you reap. And if you sow, giving the finger to our maker, we reap destruction and that's what's happened. You want to know why our country's falling apart? Because we rejected the true and living God and his written word, the Bible. The Anglican, C of E Church, the Methodists, all of them have turned their back on the teaching of Jesus. Renaid, renaid, betrayed their responsibility. When Zacchaeus got close to the crowd that surrounded Jesus, the crowd saw him and elbowed him out the way. Remember, he was a short man. They hated Zacchaeus, and for good reason. Zacchaeus 
like our British establishment today, had betrayed his community and Zacchaeus had sided with the Romans, the oppressors. Our establishment, politicians, leaders of big business, institutions in this country have betrayed our Christian heritage. Okay. Um, they might say Burger King on them, but yeah, they are vegan. They're just Doritos. So, Zacchaeus, I'm learning, sided with the Romans. And that's bad, because the Romans, they were um, against the Christians later on. Was it bad? I need to go and watch Life of Brian again. Romanus. It was like, that's like today, though, because... <laughs> what? And given in to the immoral demands of LGBT <gasps> and many other far-left agendas. LGBT and any other far-left agendas. Betrayal is a terrible thing. Would Jesus have really thought that, though? Don't you think Jesus was a little bit gay? No, don't you think he would have been a bit happy about an accepting of homosexuality? He used to hang around with the fucking sailors. The fishermen. Twelve men all hanging around with him. Oh, it's men. Fishermen. Big hands. I'm only teasing. You see, I said this had happened. If you love Jesus and you think you're cross because Scott said that Jesus could have been gay, or at least would have loved gay people in the same way as he would love everyone else, how can you argue that he wouldn't love everyone? Are you going to argue Jesus wouldn't love everyone? Is that what you're going to do? You're going to argue with me that Jesus wouldn't love people? How much love do you think Jesus would have for... And we'll do a line, a list of people. And does the love go up or down for Jesus' love for people, depending on things? Is that how it works with Jesus' love? We're just going to have to find this out. If you Don't let me offend you, but if is Jesus' love going to be conditional and go up and down based on other things or does he love people no wonder no wonder the community rejected and pushed Zacchaeus away he was also a thief he was a thief as well apparently now but this man Zacchaeus a sinner a sinner you can learn something from him we can Zacchaeus didn't give up the desire he had to see Jesus didn't diminish. Well, it presumably it was a lot easier for him because he was sat around on his fat ass with his lovely house and loads of stuff. And when Jesus came walking past, he just came, looked out the window, living an easy life. Probably got someone to lift him up on his shoulders. He was such a shit. He wasn't put off by what others thought of him. He already knew what they thought of him. They hated him. But Zacchaeus sided with the Romans, you said, and was a shit. My friend, if you want to know, see Jesus, connect with your maker and escape your depression. <clears throat> oh, I'm going to escape my depression, all right. This is cheering me right up. And hopelessness. You need to be like Zacchaeus. I need to be like Zacchaeus. Short, unpopular, able to get a view on Jesus, side with the Romans. I think I'm learning. Seek the Lord Jesus. Seek Jesus. Got that. So, am I here? You've got the thing. Jesus rescues, that says. You've got the crucifix. It's Alan Wicks and his crucifix. I'm here. Jesus said in his word, and you'll find him. I have found him. Apparently. Maybe. Have I? It happened to me for... Why is the crucifix all red at the bottom? 40 odd years ago. Happened to you 40 odd years ago. I had friends, a job, bag of... I had friends and a job. It's gone downhill since then, obviously, but... Years ago. 
I had trends, a job, bag of weed, I had a lot of stuff. Bag of weed! I was on this planet and I wanted- Oh, I should have that as a clip for my button, my buttons. Weed! I had friends, a job, bag of weed. <laughs> Everything was all right. And then I picked up the big wooden crucifix. Started hating on the Islams. I had friends, a job, bag of weed. I had a lot of stuff. But I did not know why I was on this planet and I wanted to. I did not bother to think what my mate thought of me. If I had, I wouldn't be here today. What? The fear of man is a snare. If you're afraid to go closer to Jesus, if you're afraid to do that, I'm all right. because of what others going to think of you, you'll never escape your darkness. Never. Never. You've got to choose Jesus over others. When you choose anything except Jesus first, that's called idolatry. Worshipping anything except who you're supposed to worship. And also, I think I might need to get one of those snazzy little stepladder things. They look quite handy. So Zacchaeus didn't give up. He ran ahead to where Jesus was going. He used his intellect. You should use what God's given you, my friend. If you've got an intuition, a gut feeling, <laughs> there's something in this Christianity law, you need to act on your intuition. Someone has stopped to look at him down there in the street. Zacchaeus, when no one else acted on their intuition there. I'm acting on mine, which is like, fuck yeah, hey, we might see some more of this chuffer. Coming in, mink kiss. We might see some more of this chuffer. But for your final bit of dessert tonight, I couldn't believe he turned on the Islams. I didn't know he was going to turn on the Islams. I thought it was just going to be a sort of cheerful, funny de decompression section. Because I don't mind a bit of Bible studies. I don't mind a bit of love thy neighbour. You know, I think that's all right. It's a nice little message to take away. I thought he was going to give us a nice little moral message to take away. Something about, you know, morals and stuff. But in the end, he turned out to be a fucking nutter. <laughs> um, so instead, as, as promised, I want to hear what Cobes has got to say about his new sandwich and what he's doing. So let's do this. What up, YouTube? It's your boy, King Cobra. And we're gonna do another delicious food hack for your face. I won't even, listen, I won't even explain it to you. Like, you'll just understand what's going on. Oh, shit. We're gonna start the food hack off with our base, which is a Wendy's pretzel baconator. Double pretzel baconator, no ketchup. Now what I did with this baconator is I got a double pretzel baconator. And I said, hold the ketchup. And I added four extra slices of cheese to it. So like the pretzel baconator, it comes with this like... The he went dunk on the plate then, it's like very solid and dense that it comes with I then take that cheese and add four more slices to it because I'm boss like that extra cheese okay a battery exhausted I have no fucking clue what you're talking about or who and we're going to uh, <laughs> address the situation we got a pretzel baconator Oh, yeah, look at that. I think they fucked it up. Pretzel Why does it make that noise when he put it down? Is it got... I feel like it might have gone so cold that it's like... like has he refrigerated this or something? Because, like, you know, when the fat congeals and it goes hard, like, it feels like the bread's gone hard. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at it. Hang on. Can we get a still frame of it? Oh, yeah, look at that. Even to start with. I mean, I know it's just fast food, but... There is something quite off-putting about that, isn't there? Look at that. Pretzel like bacon. The sound it made when he went down. None of it moved around. Hold the ketchup. We're not done yet. This is the start. Extra cheese. YouTube. Let's go. So to the top of this, but I want to go ahead and like scooch this to the side. 
Let's see if we can't peel the top bun off. There we go. Top bun peeled off beautifully. Now, a lot of people are going to get mad at me for adding this next ingredient. But it is what it is. We have a pretzel baconator with X cheese. They're like, when I ordered it from DoorDash, they're like, you want any extra toppings on this? They gave me the option to add extra cheese. I understand so I the concept. I took the cheese that was already added to it, and I added four more slices. I understand the extra cheese. Hold the ketchup. Look at what we have here, folks. We have Doritos Dynamita. Flaming hot queso flavored. Salsa Mando, what the fuck? Be Somebody Instead triggered the sex. BBC sent tippies. Hi Scott, great work. Just got hoodie like you have on for friend at Easter. God bless. Super Chuffer owes three hugs. Big ups, yeah. I'm not like, you know, obviously I'm not like out there preaching go to Christ and like go to church all the time. I do things my way, but I'm not against people being nice and love thy neighbour and religious. And most of the stuff I heard from the, the Jesus thing was all like, you know, basically could be kind and good so I thought that was alright in my experience okay you know I hate pedophiles more than I love <laughs> he said I hate pedophiles did he just say I hate pedophiles and uh, no, oh what the fuck okay you know I hate pedophiles more than I love nacho cheese Doritos what so you know what we're gonna do to this of course you don't sandwich we're okay, we're add. putting the nacho cheese Doritos on the, the bun, yeah? These talky rip-offs. That's fine, I understand uh, that. Skip. Did fire Samantha Hudson. No, I might and miss some little so clip bits that. of gold by skipping through, but I, I haven't got time to, you know, 15 minutes of this shit. So I, I want to see the main headlines. YouTube, let's get a close-up of this food hack action. Food hack so action. Snacking. I think what food hack means is you order fast food and then you just stuff other things on top of it. I don't know how this is a hack, but the crisps are on the burger. Look at that. Doesn't that look delicious? No, it yeah. looks worse. You'd have been better off just eating them separately. It does. We're not finished yet. To the top of our Doritos, we're going to add... And also, the burger's already quite unhealthy. Some uh, Frank's Red Hot Buffalo Wing Sauce. Fair enough. Let's throw like maybe two capfuls on there. Are you going to measure it in capfuls? Pour it. <laughs> Why? You're going to make a mess. Like, it's going to be all in the... Okay. He's actually, to be fair, he's not made a mess in the pouring. But, like but surely when you return the cap to the bottle, it's going to be a horrible sticky mess. Two capfuls to our Doritos. Two of them. Okay. He's gone, he's gone through that bottle of hot sauce, hasn't he? You must like that. In individual capfuls, one at a time, apparently. Just like that. Now we got our hot sauce added to our spicy chips. Frank's Red Hot Buffalo Wing Sauce. So now you've taken the, like, you've made it super spicy on top, basically. So it's going to make it a bit more horrible, in my opinion. Like, it's going to taste of really hot, spicy sauce first. And then you're going to, like, oh, I know, uh, crisps in my burger. And then you're going to finally eat the burger, no, which is going to be made of soggy, rock hard, congealed animal bits but to add some sushi sorry what <laughs> that's my slogan tonight i all of them have made me say it tonight i'm sorry what now we're going to add some sushi to our bacon cheeseburger grab a napkin to wipe our hands real quick oh shit Disgusting! Look at that. Look at that sandwich. I can say whatever the sandwich. fuck I want, yeah. and you like it. Or you shut the fuck up. 
That's there's facts, up. there's reality, and then there's your bullshit world. There's too many fucking idiots. Put a couple on so, here. So, again, I'm vegan, so I'm not going to want the sushi with the fish in it, but sushi would just be all right to eat. Like, you're probably better off not having this and just eating the sushi and then saying, that was a nice small meal. Maybe I could have done with a bigger portion because I'm a grown boy or whatever. But, like, without this, it's quite healthy and quite normal. And, like, what you've done is you've taken the nice, reasonable thing and, again, made it worse and spoilt it by piling it on top of the burger. For flavor purposes... Let's put four on there if we can fit it. Yeah. Oh. One second. I'm just keeping a quick eye on chat. I did notice just quickly that... Um, uh, Nike Airfax, I'm not following it all. Dover and Dover, Dolly's mom and uh, whoever you were talking to can make the decision on that. But we do not tolerate like uh, um, you know sexual approaches or joviality in chat with like ladies in chat. Really, so um, I'll trust Dover and Dolly's mom's moderating on that. You can be put in timeout or you can be completely banned. So if you're not completely banned yet, then you've managed to slip through some thin ice, and I'd be very very careful and just behave because like you know. Uh, Colette is critiquing the chat not being funny as it used to be. Well, then you're going to have to pull your weight on that, I'm afraid. <laughs> you're going to have to make some jokes. Otherwise, like, you can't just critique it for not being funny. That is you. You are the chat. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not in the chat. I can't make it funnier. This is on there. There you've got some sushi on top of the burger. Okay. So food hack is now. These spicy salmon rolls are delicious. Is he eating one? He's eating one separately. At least he's doing that. Bless him. Now these haven't been completely dethawed. They haven't been completely dethawed. You mean they're frozen? Why are you eating but them? But that's all right. It's not all right. Oh. Is that that one? He's put another one on. Look at those fingernails. This is your chef. Okay, skip. Why is he? Make a bacon sushi. I skipped, and he's still fucking about with the sushi. Mm. I ordered this uh, sushi. What was it the other day? And uh, I should have let it dethaw a little bit longer, but I. When you said he ordered the sushi the other day, can you freeze sushi? I digress. Mm. What he's doing now for the rest of the video is he's eating the rest of the sushi. I'm gonna put it on top of a burger. What are you putting on now? This seems a bit. You can't see it. Weird and probably excessive. Then we're gonna add some ginger leaf. You got the snorts going on. Ginger leaf. That came with the sushi. And the only reason we're adding it is because it came with the sushi and it's lying down next to it. And I assume the bun goes on next. Please. Think. A sushi baconator from Wendy's. He doesn't give me a proper shot of it. I have to pause it there to get the shot of it. Look, it, 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 there's no... The camera work. Baconator from Wendy's. I'm going to let this uh, dethaw for a hot minute. He's going to let it dethaw? On the sushi before we try a bite. He's going to let the sushi thaw in the burger before he eats it. But I want to get you a close-up. Right, what temperature is the burger? Of me making it and be like, you know what? That's uh Oh, yeah, look at that. Rice is falling out. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna let that dethaw on the sushi for a bit before we try a bite of it. That doesn't sound right, does it? What's up, you crazy bastards? So we got this sushi baconator. But before we get into it, I'd like to make a little announcement. 
Let's crack open a uh, Mike's Harder Mango. You know what I hate about our society? If you're body positive, you're encouraging obesity. But if you're not body positive, you're fat shaming. And I personally believe... What? <laughs> Just eat the food, you fucking boggling. That the whole body positivity movement is not about encouraging people to be unhealthy. It's just encouraging people to accept and love the way they look. Because there are some people who can't control the way they look. And our society is so narcissistic and shallow. We're put to these standards. That being said, I'm not encouraging anyone to do anything. My channel is not for a certain audience. Putting sushi on top of a Baconator? What kind of nonsense is this? The food hack that I did earlier with the sushi and these, uh, yummy. Tell me what it's like, then. Come on, because I'm not ever going to eat one. <laughs> Tell me what it's As like. Somebody who struggles with body weight image issues. What? Are you talking about yourself? I'm all for supporting body positivity. Right. How many calories are in that? Says the man who drinks all the chocolate milk, so... Uh... At least there's probably not any insects in it. I say probably because there is a video of Cobra doing that with the sandwich. He left it out on the side overnight and then he did the video the next day of him eating it. And he went like that and there was a roach in it and he was eating it. He was crawling around in it. So this is... Mm. This sushi bacon is pretty fucking swinging, dude. Swinging. That's the review. Well, hey. you notice the whole body positivity movement is mainly for oh. chicks and not for dudes. What are we talking? Nobody gives a shit if dudes are fat. <laughs> what? What are we talking about? What came dripping out of it then? Defrost juice. I mean, to be fair, right? When I was at school, I would go into the school canteen. Canteen, the old school canteen. Not the tuck shop, but this canteen. And uh, I'd go to the school canteen for my dinner. And I would, you know, back then I'd eat meat or whatever. So I'd, if it was burgers, I'd like the hamburgers in a bun. And I would get a waffle, some fish fingers, and I'd layer up the bun like that with all my dinner. And I'd just eat it like that, a big sandwich of burger. So I'm all right with that. But it was the addition of the crisps and the sushi. I just think, like, there's a reason people don't do these things as normal things. Because the combination of the flavours is going to have spoiled... All the other, like, it's not exactly surf and turf, is it? Anyway. He seems to be enjoying it. Um, suck it, trolls. What is up, fellow YouTubers? It's your boy, King Cobra, back at it with another video. So my YouTube trolls are trying to ruin my cameo by trying to trick me into shouting out disgusting people. Here's the reality of it. Here's the reality of uh, his face in close up, so I'm not going to pause it and go through it any closer than that, but I think he might have staph infections going on. Uh, I do not know the name of every sicko out there, because quite frankly, I don't care. I hate. 
And certainly, whatever he's eating isn't particularly good for his teeth. Sickos. And I would never pay somebody money to do that crap just to fuck with them, you know? And to my YouTube trolls, you know what the fuck you're doing. It's like, oh, Cobra doesn't know the name of every sicko out there, so let's pay him money to shout out some random motherfucker he's never heard of and then trick them. I've got no idea what's going on, but he's recently started Cameo, which is the service where you can go on the app and pay money to somebody relatively famous or not that famous, and they will do a video for you and send it to you. And mainly it's like, happy birthday from your favorite wrestler, or, you know, lovely to see that you're getting married from your favorite comedian or something like that. And he started one up and clearly they've been abusing the system by having him shout people out. Now I've never seen one of these cameos, so I don't know what they look like, but I assume he's shouting out some pretty bad people without knowing it. <laughs> it's a little bit of a one of those. It's, it's a little bit of a one of those, isn't it? I'm not involved. Messaging to being like, oh, my friend's doing this and this and this. Could you wish him good luck? Blah, blah, blah. Fuck off. In fact, that makes my trolls the sickos because you're paying money for somebody to shout out a sicko. <laughs> Knowing that that person's autistic and he hates sickos. Is he autistic? That makes my YouTube trolls the biggest sickos on the planet. No, I'm, I'm, a, I'm obsessed with hating sickos and being a good person, what have you, and fucking... These trolls are fucking morons. <laughs> Bless him. I watch him for the food. That's how, the way I've been introduced to him, through detractor beam in the food. And if Cobra didn't rule your sad life, you wouldn't try this hard to fuck with him. It's a fact. But I stayed for the very strange behavior... And that time that woman came over and had sex with him. And then the fact that she fell asleep in the bath. And just because I say these things doesn't make me anything. It's just my trolls are fucking stupid. And the joke's on them, dude. You had your laugh for about five seconds. But I suppose doing a cameo does open you up to just saying whatever the people have paid you to say. And you do have to be careful about that. But I took your money and ran with it, dude. How is that trolling somebody? Colette, are you ever funny? Yeah, you're funny sometimes, yeah. Because Cobra hates pedophiles. So you pay him cameo money to shout out a person he's never heard the name of? Maybe it was Alan Vinicum. Actually, I could consider. Maybe I could consider doing a cameo. It's, it's all fucked now, isn't it? Because obviously people have trolled him. But would he shout out Alan Vinicum? I don't know. The famous armchair detective. And nonce. <laughs> Y'all are fucking retarded, dude. Bear in mind, this is the world that Alan Vinicum, Luke, and all them live in. This is not a watch. <laughs> as much as it is what it is, it is what it is. Lol cows on the internet. People who are eccentric beyond beyond the normal means and behaviors. This is their world. People will go out of their fucking way to bully me for anything. Oh, bless him. I feel a bit sorry for him here, actually, because I don't bully him myself. I'm not into that. I just think what he does is fucking disgusting, and he publishes it on the internet. Certainly the food stuff I find I bizarrely disgusting. Like, the one where there was a bug in the food was bad. The mead is bad. Like, I, we will look at others in other videos. I watch it in other places as well, but um, I don't want to think of him as being bullied. You know, I don't go into his chat and give him shit or anything like that. And they know I hate pedophiles and sick <laughs> goes and shit like that. So of course they're gonna try as hard as they can to fuck with me on it. So now I'm getting the idea that he's been shouting out pedophiles on his cameo. <laughs> and honestly, it's disgusting. It really is. I'm not seeing any of it on the internet, though. So. What is up, YouTube? So, extra bacon on there with the brown sugar goodness. 
I like Arby's horsey sauce. It's basically a horseradish. It's so if you're feeling hungry, it's not too spicy. It's got like a little bit of sweetness to it, and then it boom, and it hits you with that heat. If you're feeling hungry. We didn't get to finish off room 101, but they can all go in it as far as I'm concerned. They can all go in it. I'll tell you what, I'll finish you off on a song. I'll finish you off with a song. Yeah, because recently we did the King of the Ring on that being said. Over on that being said, we did the King of the Ring competition. So you might have seen this come out on Battery Exhausted, the most recent upload. It's me singing The Righteous Chuffers. It's about Dark Side Phil. And I'm going to finish us on a song. If you've recently become a member, then get and check out this member's content, which is all over the channel, like whatever that is on Sarah Honeywell's face. I'll be back with another live stream, absolutely weekly Nutter Watch. We can have this revolving door of nutters. You can suggest them, put them in the comments, whatevs. We'll be here enjoying nutters at the weekends, probably Fridays, really. Should be Fridays. And uh, in the week, I might try and jump on and do bits and pieces. I'll be on Twitch. I'm probably going to jump over to Twitch now and play some Genshin Impact. And of course, we find stuff on Twitch and we watch it and that comes over on Battery Exhausted as videos. Of course, Super Chuffer is also the main channel and we've got Super Chuffer for you. So I'm just grateful that you're here for any of it and you enjoy any of it, frankly. Grateful for any of that. If you were in the supermarket ahead of me, I would, of course, just push you fucking aside. I just push you aside. I, I don't care. They can. I can deal with them in... I'm doing my show now, so I'm not going to help you with your heavy thing. No. <laughs> Push you aside. No, I told you I would be busy till 7 o'clock. <laughs> but since we're not in the supermarket and you're not in my way, you know, I think we've all managed to get through tonight, haven't we? We've all managed to get through. I really thank you to all the people who sent me a super chat or a tippy or a coffee.com tippy. Thank you for that. Lego and feel less we came to take win. I'm very grateful. And uh, hopefully you've enjoyed yourselves. That's the main thing. I don't wish any of these people any harm, alarm or distress. You know, it's a bit of a laugh on the internet, looking at strange behaviour, eccentricity, and sometimes where it crosses the line into something. Hear all that? Hearing that? Gave me a bit of a fright, that did. That's There's local dogs that make a, a barky, so they go out late at night. Don't worry about it. So sometimes it crosses the line from eccentricity into something else, and we cover that. It's not all nonces, okay? Some of them are just weird in other ways, and I try to stay over the right-hand lane. Like, I don't want to be bullying people on the internet for being like, for example, Cobra there, autistic. I didn't really know that about him until just then when he said it, and I tell you what, um, I'm not, it's equal opportunities here. You can be any kind of person, if you're going to cross the line into what I consider to be hateful or um, grifting or like, Nancy with Cobra it's disgusting food and he does do some grifting but you know what I mean we're having a laugh about the food he eats okay so I don't suggest we do any bullying okay all be good here um, we stand up to people that are bullies like Alan for example who was a big bully on YouTube and got banned so thanks big Chris for the two pound super chat thank you all thank you for the big member bomb from Red Fan and members remember members remember there are membership benefits such as watching content that exists that's a bit raw for youtube and that will keep happening so <laughs> if you've got your family tree and we will do a dna one and you've said in the ch in the chat you're interested in my dad doing a show i think we'll do it for members i think we'll do it as a members thing maybe because um, i would like to do it it might be interesting it'd be difficult shit's difficult like trying to think consider how to get it all out in one stream um because it's a big story, I suppose. But yeah, we'll see what we can do. He's not going to enjoy sitting in this room with me smoking. That's not going to happen. I'm going to have to not smoke for the entire time he's in here. Twitch link. Yeah, good shout. Good shout. I'm going to jump over to Twitch now. I'll just be two minutes like changing the stream over. Um, so the show will start over there in about two to five minutes. And, it, you know, I'm really grateful if you turn up there. Like, that's up to you totally. I'm just going to play Genshin Impact, chill. We might watch some videos. We might talk Simcast. We might talk anything. You don't know. Big shouts out to Simcast. Big shouts out to Simcast if she's watching. I'm cute. And, uh, yeah, big ups. 
<laughs> big ups if you managed to avoid the ban hammer in chat. Big ups everyone. Big ups the greens. You be good. It's been fun. You be good. And if you can't be good, you are notice. You're notice. Oh wait, I'm going to finish on a song. No one stayed to watch it because I forgot to tell you that it's happening. I did tell you it was happening. Where is it? Wait, where's my song? <laughs> Here. Oh, my love, Hulk Hogan, I've hungered for your crotch, a long, lovely crotch. And tips come in so slowly. The tips can buy so much. This is about Dark Side Phil and his grifting. And he spends all the money on Hulk, Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan's on a mobile game. Just, just anyway. I need your money. I need your money. I've got two big bills. I need your money. God seed your money to me. Where are you? All my money goes to Scopely, to Scopely. All my money flows to Scopely. Lonely Riverside, wait for tea, wait for tea. He won't be coming home, you basically murdered him. Oh, my love, John Rambo. I hungered for your touch. An authentic Italian touch. A long, lonely time. We, we were just work colleagues. Work colleagues. And basically DSP ruins every relationship he takes part in. Shut up, you. <laughs>